Congratulations on the boutique store. Oh, thank you. Head Jewel. Yes. Just opened this year. Eh? Yes, just opened. In fact, one month plus ago. One month plus ago, and yeah. it's called Sauce Legend. Yes. So Sauce Legend, I'm sure would ca- uh, carry Secret Umami. Yes. Uh, what's the concept behind okay. Sauce Legend? Sauce Legend is again uh, a slightly different concept from Nanyan Sauce and Secret Umami. So these are product based brands, right? Nanyan Sauce, Secret Umami. So when I look at the bigger picture. I see that in our industry, it is not just Nanyan sauce, but there are also other traditional old sauce legends that are traditional, artisanal, artisanal, which means handmade, using natural ingredients. They've been around 50, 100, 200 years. But we are sharing a common fate. We are getting endangered. We are dying because you don't find us in the mass supermarkets. You don't find us everywhere on the shelves. You don't find some of these brands. But does it mean we are no good? No. It's because we are stubborn. Mm. We stick true to our principles of making food that we will serve our children. Right? So as a result, we can't be cheaper, we can't be faster, and we can't be fancier, and we can't be as profitable as the mass produced factories that make sauce. As a result, we are dying. So I got a call and the whole concept of Sauce Legend came about because during the COVID lockdown the last two years, I got a call from a friend in Malaysia. He said there's this old sauce maker that is going to close down. And I said, why? Well, because the founder had a stroke and, you know, the health issues and there's no one to take over. So I felt it was a pity, right? But the, the, the company has just been making and selling, you know, even without labels. Mm. So how are you going to rescue that, right? It's going to be hard because people have brand loyalty. Yeah. People look for a brand that they buy. So there were enough of these stories over the last few years since I came back to the family business and said, we have had some experience, we have had some success in innovating our brand, you know, bringing it forward to the future. What about others? Are there brands that are making other sauces like fish sauce, Oyster sauce, sriracha chili. So we went on that journey to find old makers from each of these countries. So we found, for example, <coughs> oyster sauce from Hong Kong. Mm. It's, a, oh, it's an old brand, right? But it's not available in Hong Kong supermarkets. Only the extreme foodies, you know, will go all the way to this place, right? In Hong Kong. Right? It's, not, it's not in the usual CBD area, but it's outside mm. of the mainland Hong Kong, right? It's in the te- northern territories. But he uses, he has a small oyster farm, and he uses 200 oysters to boil for hours mm. for each batch of oyster sauce. Now, that's not the commercial brand you find outside. Mm. You know, in supermarkets, they sell for a few dollars, five, ten dollars a bottle. But this is somebody's life work. And that's how real oyster sauce is. So a bottle of oyster sauce, when I open it, It was a customer that recommended me. I smell. Mm. It's like you had the oyster smell, you know? Okay. It's not just oyster flavored sauce that you get mm. these days. There's no MSG. So when I saw that, I'm like, huh. and they're not selling anywhere outside. So that's not even online. Not online. They have no website. So how do they sell? They Word of mouth? To, yes, it's like Nanyan sauce, right? Okay. You and I, most of people would not have heard of Nanyan sauce five, ten years ago. Mm. Right before we came in and rejuvenated the brand. But we've been around. We have trademarks that go back to the 60s, invoices that go back to the 50s, right? And it's because we are not in supermarkets. We haven't taken up huge advertising on newspapers and all that. So there are not many, but it's so hard to find. And I love oyster sauce, but I can't take MSG because I'm allergic to MSG. So when I found that oyster sauce, for example, I was so excited. And I approached them and I said, hey, Can I sell a sauce? And then the maker was saying, ah, it's too much trouble. So I had to find a friend to help with the whole importation and everything. And finally, we had this oyster sauce here. You know, so Sauce Legend is not just about Nanyan sauce. It's about Sauce Legends. That's why the name Sauce Legend. So I created a neutral name, a name that was not heard of before, Sauce Legend. So it can represent legendary old sauce makers around Asia. So we have got oyster sauce from Hong Kong, fish sauce from Vietnam, mm. award-winning, the very best, as well as sriracha chili, the original maker of sriracha chili, 
from Thailand, 1932, almost 100 years now, mm. you know, making in his own shop. So we have got a, a, a weird collection of antiques, if you will, or dinosaurs mm. in this shop, right in the middle of jewel. Can you imagine? And each of it is a story by itself. Each of it has got a story. So yeah. coming to my shop is like a learning journey. You know, parents bring kids, they come and they're fascinated because I've got information boards, I've got TV screen, I show, you know, and each of this is a story and any point in time, my supply might just cut mm. because not many of the second, third, fourth generation want to take over. Mm. Yeah, and some of the sources are selling for $4, $5, $8, $10. <laughs> it's what you get outside, but you get the real stuff. Okay. No chemicals and all that. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's the whole dream of Source Legend. Whether it works, it depends on the audience support, right? I mean, if my customer support, yeah, are there enough Singaporeans and tourists that that will buy? Then we know whether we have a, a future. But mm. it's an experiment. Is the reason to have a store at Jewel also because you want to promote it to a wider international audience as well? Yes, uh. I want people from their own country, people mm. from. Thailand to know about their shiracha chili. I want people from Indonesia to know about their local ketchup money is made right in Jakarta. They find out about it in Jewel in Singapore. Correct. And, and some yeah. of them go back and buy and support them. Mm. I want that because where else can you find, right, in Singapore, a place that would have such a high footfall and that's Jewel. And I believe with COVID reopening, there's that, that increased traffic that will come through. You know, and, and we have. In fact, I had a customer just last week came in. And she was from Hong Kong. And she was surprised, fabricated, and so shocked to find the Hong Kong oyster sauce that she was been using. She said, how do you know about them? I had so much trouble trying to find them, you know. Mm -hmm. Myself, being a Hong Konger, I have, mm -hmm. have to take, you know, uh, uh, transport. I have to drive all the way up north to get this oyster mm -hmm. sauce. You know, so they were surprised that they could find it in Jewel. And more and more sources are coming. We've got sources coming from Japan, Taiwan. And that's because customers are recommending me this source. So if you go to sourcelegend.com, I even have a, a tab that customers can key in. Tell me your favorite source. Yep. Recommend to me. Tell me sources I don't know about. Because end of the day, I'm bringing this not because they're popular. Because most distributors will bring sources that are already a success. They are ABC. Ketchup Manis, for example, that's really roaring success, like Kam Gay from Hong Kong, right? I'm bringing sources that nobody knows about. I'm going against the grain. I'm taking the risk that I can't sell these sources. But before I do that, they have to fulfill three criteria. Hmm. First one that is they must be an old maker, at least 50 years old. Okay. Right? So we're not looking at, at brands that just come up and Nowadays, it's hip to try to be old, right? Mm. But these are real old sources, old source brands. Number two, it must be using natural ingredients. Okay. As natural as the original, how, for example, oyster sauce, fish sauce is made. Number three, it has to be handmade mm. in small batches, not selling in conventional supermarkets. Then I bring them in. So, for example, this oyster sauce that you spoke about, yeah. each shipment or every month, how many will you bring in? Will you be able to bring in, actually? I don't know. Okay. I, I brought in a pallet and when I finish selling, then I'll bring another pallet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'll bring it in. I, I always tell my customers, I don't know whether you'll be on the shelves next month or the month after. Because truth be told, each of these supply, each of these makers are in short supply. For example, my Shiracha chili mm -hmm. is out of stock. Okay. I call the maker and say, can you supply me? They say, the weather has changed. The weather is so bad, I don't have fresh chili. How do I supply you? So it's been out of stock, not in my jewel store, but also in his shop in Bangkok as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So it is uh, against convention wisdom that you got to constantly have the supply so that you know you don't lose potential sales. As most retailers, you know, would tell you they don't want an OOS situation which is out of stock. Mm -hmm. But for us, is that every item in there is limited. Every item we don't know whether there is a future, but today. It is on the shelf. It has a space in Source Legend today. How many brands have you brought in so far in Source I Legend? Generally more than 10 brands. Mm -hmm. We have from Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Hong Kong, coming soon, Japan and Taiwan, mm -hmm. and more as well. We want it beyond Asia as well. As long as I squeeze it in, 
I will give each of these brands a fighting chance. I don't charge any listing fee and all those kind of high margins that typically you have to pay to get on the shelves in a prime location, mm. right? But I said, okay, let me buy it from you. It's not consignment. I buy it from you. I pay cash. I put my money where my mouth is. I buy it from you. I put it on the shelves. If it sells, then I get mm. a bit. Okay. Right? And I don't, there's no high markup. So actually it's a high risk model for you? Extremely. Yeah. But thankfully, because of Nanyan Sauce, we have Nanyan Sauce as a base, mm. right? We also have a lot of loyal customers from Singapore, from the east side especially, right? Uh, who come to Jewel and they've been buying. So I have a, a loyal base of customers that also are now open to buying the oyster sauce that I recommend, the fish sauce I recommend because of their faith in my existing products. And I'm sure, you know, with the quality, once they try one bottle, you, know, yeah, so once you, you, you can't go back. You know. At our shop, right, we yeah. offer them free smelling, yep. free tasting, yep. you know, sampling. You know, you try before you buy. Where do you get that in Singapore? You don't get that anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. So, the why is Nanyang sauce not available in all supermarkets? Because of a few reasons. The first one is our production is in short supply, right? So short supply means that it takes nine months for me to make, right? If I go to all supermarkets, that means I need to increase my production, all right? And I can't change the recipe. I don't want to change the recipe. That's what makes us unique, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't want to go the chemical way. So only way is I, possible way is if I, if I have bigger land, but uh, which you know in Singapore they have short supply, mm. right? Even if I have bigger land, I will need more manpower, right? Which means you've got to train people and not many young people are willing to come into this business. Or I need more vets. Mm. These vets are also antiques because they'll be around 60, 80 years. Oh no. Where then do I find yeah, them? Yeah, where right? do you find them? Yeah. Right. And, and they retire every year through because of time. Okay. Some of them crack. We try to mend, but even then you mend it is never fully the same. So whatever that is this commission we lay out outside as a display as decoration, you know, so they, 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 they are retired and I have increasingly lesser and lesser vets, mm. right, so, and that's why, right, and I can't supply it to all because some of, uh, uh, in fact, now we only have it in fair price finest. Yeah. Not all 150, 100 of outlets of fair price, but just 30 outlets. Yeah. Right, we are not in a dairy farm, we are not in cold storage and, uh, you know, we are not in many of this, right, and also sometimes because, the margins, the listing fee are too high for us to afford, mm. right? So we we do what we can to provide convenience so people can buy all over Singapore because it's a island-wide coverage of fair price finance. At the same time, people buy online, so we're also on Shopee, Amazon, Redmart. So we use these modern channels for ease of buying. But will we ever become like Da Wow or become like Kiko Man or Le Kam Ke? Never. You can't. We can't. Because of the yes. production methods right. and so the volume that you can produce. Right? And that's right. Because of our duration, our materials, our time, manpower involved, our cost will be higher. Which means that not everybody will want to buy a sauce that is a few times higher. Mm. You know what I mean? So the nature of consumption as well. But that being said, increasingly, we have a lot of customers. Once they have tried, the real stuff, the real soy sauce, you it's can't hard go, to back. go back. Yeah, it's hard to go but back. But it's only when they have not tried, yep. then they would. Because end of the day, sauce is a not an everyday one bottle you drink, like a bottle of wine. Yep. Or, you know, it's not what a bottle a day. A bottle of sauce these days. Over three, four months. Exactly, right? Or they don't even cook daily. Yeah, yeah, some of them use it over a few weeks for those who cook regularly, a few months, mm-hmm. some of them one year later, then they come back, right? So if you amortize that, Divide yep. that cost yep. per serving is mm. cents more, right? It's actually affordable. So mm. in fact, we are also finding the trend during COVID, right? Something strange happened. We find that all around Singapore, people start to experiment because we are all at home. Ma. People start to experiment with better ingredients. So we started delivering to a lot of different areas all around Singapore that traditionally we didn't have much customers. Yeah. And then people find that, hey, actually, wow, the difference is there. And then they start, they start cooking more. And, you know, actually they realize that by using onion sauce, they are saving. Mm. It doesn't make sense, right? How do you save? It's because they eat out less. Their food tastes better. Their kids come home. They go out less. 
And as you know, when you eat less out, you eat at home more, you're able to save more. Yep. By using, in fact, for the same dollar, you're not paying for rent or manpower, you get extra uh, value for money in terms of you can use better ingredients and overall your spending is less. Yeah. Yeah. So all these things um, we didn't know when I first came in. When I first came to a business, it was a big risk because we don't have those advertising budgets like some of the big boys, right? Every Chinese thing you can see them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, you know, at that time, I, re- I could recall it was a very, in fact, it's still a challenging situation. But my wife at that time was pregnant with my first child. And when I said I was going to leave my corporate job into this um, traditional business, you know, she was so worried. She just touched her tummy, <laughs> the belly, and said, are you sure? So why do you go back to the business? I went back because it was a matter of no choice. Uh, if I don't do it, there's nobody in my generation that wants to do this. At the same time, the second gen, they were at the age, in their 60s, their 70s. That means your, tired, your parents' yes, generation. Mom, okay. brothers, cousins, at the age where they want to stop already. Because much as they work so hard, every year we are losing money. Oh, every year we are losing money? We're losing money. Okay. I don't know how a business can be losing money for so long. Then I am just thankful that my grandfather made some money. Okay. First gen makes some money. And they, they, they lose money. Why? Because we are increasingly under a, what we call a hamburger situation. Okay. The price year after year is the same. We can't increase price. Why? Because people benchmark us with the commercial brands, right? Agree? And, and you are probably already, already more expensive than the commercial brands. Yeah, but the, the, the situation back then, I'm talking okay. about before, before, five, six years before, was that the price by inflation, you can't increase your price, right? Mm. At the same time, your cost of ingredients are increasing. Your manpower costs are increasing. So the margin is getting thinner and thinner. And the reason why the commercial brands can make money and we can't is because they have switched to a faster way. Imagine a day to a week of making a bottle of sauce versus nine months, mm. which are more profitable. You know it, right? Uh, I, my child was six years old, I explained that to her, she understood. You know, it's definitely more profitable. And that's why the old makers, in the past 50, 100 years ago, all sauce makers make like Nanyan sauce. I guarantee you, because there is no other technology. But about 30, 40 years ago, technology came about. And some of the sauce makers had no choice. Because people are not willing to pay more. And manpower crunch, everything. How do you continue to make handmade soy sauce? So, so the soy sauce you see outside is not handmade. Only we have the courage to put that it's handmade on our labels. Handmade, which means artisan. Mm. Right? Because a lot of it is replaced with machines. And it's not just machines, because with machines, yes, technology is good. But because of the machinery involved, they have to replace some of the ingredients. They can't use whole soybeans. They have to use something that is a byproduct of soybean oil extraction. And this oil information is available on the internet. Right? The food industry, I have a lot to say about it, right? But mm. generally, the food industry, because to feed the millions of people out there, we have increasingly to rely on technology. So a lot of food that we get these days is all genetically modified. Mm. It's not the real stuff. Mm. That's why if you try organic food, or you see an organic carrot, for example, mm. versus a the carrots we see these days are all very nice, right? They are certain mm. shape, they yep. are certain... But the organic carrots is thin, it's ugly, yep. it has holes, yep. you know? But how much of our carrots today is organic? The same thing, how much of the soy sauce today is real soy sauce, mm. right? So I can understand their concerns, right? But because of our principles, or at least my grandfather's belief in only serving what he feeds to his family, to his customers. So Nanyang sauce is organic? Organic and non-GMO. We have two okay. varieties. Okay. Yes. So non-GMO means it's not genetically modified. Okay. But that is as good as organic, but one notch below. Right? We also have the organic range, which is even higher, slightly higher uh, range. Mm-hmm. So we use these two only. And we use whole soybeans, not the, not the soybean... Uh, what do you call it? Some people call it soybean extract. Some people mm. call it the defatted. In fact, the industry came out with a term for it called defatted soybeans. Mm. Sounds healthy, right? Mm. It's actually not. 
defatted like F A T T E D. Yes. Okay. It is the byproduct of soybean oil extraction. You know that soybean cooking oil. Yep. So the soybean cooking oil comes from the oil in the soybean. They extract out the all the good stuff from the soybean. Whatever is left, it's like the za do okay. That that thing, I don't know what you call that. So they Quite use that to manufacture their They use sauce. it for making soy sauce. I once okay. asked a maker, why don't you use whole soybeans? Whole soybeans is already, it's not too expensive, right? I mean, it's not that it's like out of reach. He said, because Ken, when I use machines, the oil from the soybean will jam up the machines. So I have to use this thing. Mm. I don't want to, these things taste not as good as real soybean, but I have to, no choice. And because I use this thing, the flavor is not as good. After that, I have to add in artificial flavoring to kind of lift up the taste so that people can still accept it. So there is always a trade-off. There's no such thing as good and cheap. Mm. No such thing. Right? If you want good, it will not be cheap. Right? So the family business, like you very candidly share, it was in fact losing money for a long time. Yes. That means, I suppose, your uncles and your mom, you're probably, they probably know that it's the ticking time bomb, right? right? The yeah. time sticking. Correct. And that's why they refuse to let me come into the business. They said, Ken, you're running a, I was doing a tr- corporate training gig, meaning I do corporate leadership, team building, innovation programs for companies. They said, you are doing well. You've been doing it for 10 over years. Why do you want to come back into the sunset industry? Mm-hmm. In my mom's mind, I can make money with a pen and paper. Right? Because training, right? You yeah. talk and then you write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you want to come back and slog it out and sell a bottle at the end of nine months for a few dollars? Mm-hmm. Even if it's ten dollars, so what? Right? So the first few years was especially difficult because I had a product that nobody knew existed. People were thinking we came from Malaysia or people thinking we were a new brand that tried to look old. So I had to do a lot of education. I had to open my own shop. I had to workshops which was what I was doing in my corporate training gig, right? I had to do a lot of things, tell my story to the media, and, and over the last few years, our awareness has gone up, right? Quite a bit. But still then, if you take a stone, <laughs> you throw in a crowd, you hit someone, there's a good chance they don't know about Nanyang sauce. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know about Nanyang sauce. Exactly. I cook. Yeah. I didn't know about Nanyang sauce. Yeah, you didn't know, right? And, yeah. and not even you, even some chefs. Mm. I do tasting with chefs, and one of them say, I've been around for 40 years. How can I have never of you? So before NTUC Finance, like during your mom's and your uncle's period, where is it distributed? Where is it sold? Well, it was sold in our factory. People would come to our factory. Oh. It was sold at some very old provision shops, you know? Yeah, because of the old network, yeah, you also continue right. to distribute that's to them. That's right, that's right. Uh, yeah, we still have that, that old range. We kept it for sentiment sake, sentimental sake. Okay. Right? We, we have old customers that go by that range. We still have that. So that range that goes by a different packaging? It still has Nanya sauce on it, but it has an emblem, an animal on it, and it's called a golden swan brand. Okay. So it's like a duck, like a swan. Some people say it's a goose. The golden swan brand. We still keep that. So the 80 year old Ama can know how to go back and recognize that yes. brand and buy that. Yes. Okay. I tell you an interesting story. You yeah. know why people why are the old brands usually have a, a, a picture of a flower, a picture of an animal, of kids and all that? Do you know why? No, no, because Lao Hua is easy to recommend, like okay. recognize. Because or? our grandparents, many of them came from China. They only spoke their dialect. Mm. They were illiterate. Like yep. my grandma, she didn't know how to speak Chinese or, or write recognized characters in Chinese or English. She was fluent in Hokkien. But they could recognize the animal. Mm. Be our golden swan or a tiger, lion, elephant, you know. People could recognize that. That's why that. And there's also a story. Why my grandfather chose the swan? Because typically you get the very aggressive animals, right? Yep. Lion, tiger, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> but he is an artist okay. more than a businessman. He, he, swans are the only birds that when they find a partner, they stay together for life. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's a bit of a romantic in yeah, it. Right? Um, that, you know, if I make my soy sauce good, Keep my standards. Oh. My customers will stay in for life. And at my shop in Jewel now, I see customers walk in so happy to find the sauce they've been using for three, four generations available in Jewel. Mm. Right? And they will always come to us and tell us stories of how their grandmother has been using and all that. Some of them even know my grandfather. Mm. So, so these are little, uh, what do you call that? 
memories or little sharings and little joys that I find that keep me going. Because mm. it is hard. Mm. We are we are no way easier than we were five years ago. But at least we have turned the corner. We are getting more and more people buying our products. We are getting more and more customers who appreciate and try a different sauce. Right as you cook, right you understand. Yep. You try. Hey, there's a bit of the aftertaste. It's not just si kiam. Yep. You borrow a Hokkien word. It's not yep. just salty. Mm. A lot of people say soy sauce don't put so much. A lot of MSG very thirsty. Ours no MSG, mm. right? And it's not uh, just si kiam. It's just salty. It's kiam pang, mm. which is a Hokkien kiam pang, right? Yep. But it basically means umami. Xian xiang. Ah, it has yeah. that dou xiang wei mm. that comes after that. And it's healthy, I tell you. Mm-hmm. So I had an interview with uh, CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They flew down, they shot at my brewery. One of the first questions is, it was a very tough question they asked me. Soy sauce is considered unhealthy in the Western world. What do you have to say to that? So I thought about, long and hard about this question. And within a minute, I said, do you know, first, do you, I don't disagree with you, but do you know how soy sauce and why soy sauce was invented hundreds of years ago. Why? Because it was invented to stretch salt. Can you imagine? Extract salt? No, stretch. Stretch salt. Salt, S-A-L-T. Okay. Salt was a precious commodity because hundreds, uh, hundreds of years ago, there was no railways, there were no planes, right? Uh, transporting salt from the coaster, because how do you get salt? From the sea, right? So the seaside people, people who live by the coastal area like the Fujian, the Cantonese, right? Will have access to salt. But people in inland China, for example. The Sichuan, ah, uh, Chengdu. You know? The salt was okay. expensive. Mm. So it was invented and created partly. One of the reasons was to stretch whatever salt they had. So meaning to say, to achieve the same level of saltiness, if you reverse engineer it, it achieves the same level of saltiness in your cooking. When you put soy sauce, mm. the natural one, eh, not the modern fast chemical one, versus the salt using salt itself, which one has more sodium? Salt. Salt. Mm. So soy sauce was designed to shred salt. So actually soy sauce is healthy, but why do so many people think it's unhealthy these days? You get the, you know, they associate soy sauce with the Chinese restaurants, with MSG in the West, right? Where you get migraine. It's because a lot of soy sauce is not the real soy sauce anymore. That's what a lot of people don't understand. So they are right. So I saw the chemical, the fast way, is unhealthy. But the true artisanal way is healthy. Let me blow your mind <laughs> again with another mm. nugget of information. When you see outside on a food label in a supermarket, no added sugar, no added MSG. Yeah. Is there MSG? Is there sugar? No. That's not true. Oh no. The keyword is added. So the ingredients has inherent sugar and yes. MSG. and that's The ingredients already have inherent sugar, inherent MSG. They just didn't add more. Mm. That's how shocking the food industry is. Okay. Don't believe me, just Google. Mm. Right? When there's word no added, so for us, it's no MSG means no MSG. We don't try to disguise it with words, fancy words like added. Confuse people. Yes. Yes, I got confused. I was shocked. And it was a customer five years ago who told me about this. Mm. Right? Yeah, so increasingly, there are all these new terminologies, new innovations, technology. But end of the day, always best. Mm. What our forefathers eat is best. I'm curious, you know, when the company is losing business, right? Why wasn't there a discussion to just call it a day and just sell off whatever assets and, you know, liquidate everything and everybody lead their own retired life? That is a good question. And that is thinking from a logical point of view. Mm. Right? And that is a business point of view. But family businesses, not all family business, think like that. Right? For once, uh, for one, I can understand them. Initially, I had the same question. So why don't we just... Call your day, right? yeah. or your own, you know, and, and enjoy life. And the more life. you do, the more we lose, right? Mm. But first thing is, the consideration was, this is a family business started by Ah Gong. You don't do, it becomes. Sir, in a way, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like the Kung you know? Fu, you know? Yeah. A Kung Fu passed down if you don't have a Di Zi. Yeah. So they want to keep it as long as they can. And number two, you'll be surprised, right? But they have been spending 
their whole life in the sauce brewery making soy sauce. One worry they had is, what am I going to do? From 15, 16 year old all the way to 60s, 50, 60 years of their life is in the sauce brewery. Nobody's going to employ them. They're not going to get a job with any other sauce maker because other people use technology now. They don't lo- no longer make it the artisanal way, right? They're using machines. You press button and then chemical A plus B, you get C, mm-hmm. right? So it was also that fear of not knowing what to do. And the third thing also, it was also, I think, a little bit more personal that uh, the moment they know that the moment they stop their physique or their health deteriorate very fast right and this is from uh, personal sharing uh, personal experience where uh, uh, at one time we had a, a family member it was my grandfather's brother-in-law right? he was at a sauce brewery right and uh, working into his 90s he was so fit carrying 10 kilos of sauce 5 kilo each side mm-hmm. you know every day and lifting heavy boxes and then one day, for some reason, right, we don't know what, he said, decided to call it a day. And unfortunately, you know, his health dropped. And he had a fall. I, I heard, right, this was a bit, quite a, some time ago. And he went to the hospital and never recovered. Mm. And so, so, so it's that, that way of, it's almost like a lifestyle. It's almost like a workout, if you will. It's about keeping our our whole body, you know, exercising through all the actions that we do. Plus the sentimental value. Plus the sentimental value. And the heritage. And also the responsibility to the customers. Mm -hmm. Now I remember one of them was like, what about all the distributors? There are some distributors in wet market stores that just sell our brand. Mm. If we cut, what are they going to do? They've been buying from us for 50 years. Right? So there was that a combination of reasons that led them to carry on and thank God they did thankfully they did because then we had something to be on because if they didn't no right person no person in the right frame of mind will go start a new soil sorcery your capex capital investment to buy a land build it up will be in a easily 7 to 8 digit figure mm-hmm. you know in modern day Singapore and you don't have the know-how. You don't have the recipe. No one would do it in Singapore, yeah. basically. Yeah. Even overseas now, you know, it's not cheap now, you know, even in China, Malaysia, Indonesia, traditional manufacturing powerhouses, mm. everything's going up. Mm. You don't get, you don't have uh, at least 10, 20 million, you cannot even start. And that's not counting marketing costs. It's just the Produ- factory, pr- producing, producing the manufacturing. Right? The manufacturing yeah. side of it, right? So it is, uh, I would say, it's a, it's a confluence of factors. Um, and, and I was very lucky uh, because I had the only, I was the only, I was the eldest grandson, uh, eldest child, grandchild, right? Because my mom is the eldest, so I'm the eldest, um, who had interaction with my grandfather. Mm. So up to 1996, when he passed away, very suddenly, um, he walked to his death, literally. He had a heart attack in the factory. Uh-huh. He was always the first in and last out. And then we sent him to the hospital and unfortunately he has it always been this factory, this location? No. This is our third location. We started okay. in the Yunos Pai Leba area. Okay. We moved to Drone in the 70s. And our current location, we moved there in the ni- 1999, 2000 period. So yeah. he, passed, he passed away in the in second the, factory, the second location. Factory, yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I, I was the only grandchild that had that privilege to know him. Because at that time, when he passed, I was 12. So all my cousins were all younger. Mm. Right, and my cousins, their parents were not in the business, so it was never a chance to get to know him. So I, I, I used to uh, go to the factory and uh, sit at his table, right? And he would just give me the simplest of tasks: right? count my coins, right? I would count fifty cent, twenty cent, and he would, he would, he would, he would have a TV screen. I don't know if you remember, but uh, at back at that time, there was teletext. Teletext. Watch the stocks. Correct. The stocks, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I recall 316 will be all the top movers mm-hmm. out there. And yeah. I didn't know what that meant fully until now. Right? Okay, I have a better knowledge of stocks. Yeah. But I know if it's green, it's going up. Mm. If it's white, it's going down. Mm. Right? He will tell me certain prices and yeah. watch over him. Yeah. And I would drink from his mug, which would be cigarette stained, mm. right? With his metal mug. 
So I had all this interaction, and one particular story I remember to this day was the fact that one day he was at his desk, I was beside him, and he was having his meeting. So I always sit in, because you know, I always be there. Uh, I will be very quiet. I don't know what they're talking. But that day he stood up, he pointed at me, he shouted at the guys he was meeting. He said, "Get out!" In Hokkien, say, "If I don't dare to feed my grandson." This new soy sauce you are teaching me to make, how can I feed the rest of Singapore? Mm. And I thought I did something wrong, right? And after that, I understood, because this were a group of consultants who were trying to sell him the new technology and know-how to make the the automation process, yeah, the scale up the whole operations, yeah, from okay. nine months to to a week, okay, or less, which some other brands took it lah. No, no, I, any businessman in the right frame of mind. I mean, if you're a business, you know that will give you an edge, right? Yeah. But he wasn't. He was an artisan. So I'm never fully a businessman. Mm. I feel a lot of times there are deals that I walk away from because our values don't align. I we look at values first. Do we align our values? If yes, then we do business. Same thing I look for in my distributors. It's not always the biggest distributor that I go for. Some of them are people that could be smaller, but they understand. Understand our soil source. They understand the soul of our soil source. Why we are different. It's not the packaging. It's not the branding. It's not all this is important. But if your core product is no good, any amount of zeng ah, you zeng anyway also. And I'm sure there's also probably a reason why many of these source legends decide to work with you as well, right? It's the understanding and the trust. Yes, that you have and it's between because, artists. You know? Yes, I remember I went to one in Japan. I can't speak Japanese. He can't speak English. But it was a seventy-six-year-old sauce maker. This was before COVID. I went in. I see their stuff, right? And he tried. He explained through a translator how he do. And after that, you know, I always felt that there was a bit of barrier. Like he was quite guarded, mm. as normal, right? Because we are both in sources. But after I sat down. With him, he asked to see how we make our sauce. So I show him a video that was done by I think one of the media outlets, right? So it was on YouTube. I search, yep. I show him, and after that, he's happy. He was straight away connected. Okay. He was like, "You still do like that? Some base fermentation?" He said, "When he was an apprentice at fifteen years old, that's what his master used to teach." And this guy is seventy five years, seventy six years old at that time, and he had a newfound. Connection, a respect, if you will, that we are still keeping to this way. And after that, he told me less than one percent of soy sauce in Japan. And you can Google this; it's on BBC and all that. Less than one percent of soy sauce in Japan is made still this way that Nanyang sauce makes the sun-based fermentation. Yes, and that's so why everything's exposed in the yes. open space, right? Yes, and not just okay. sun-based, but the handmade way. Because mm. some people do fermentation, but no longer handmade. They can use the faster way to ferment, right? Everything is automated. It's no longer handmade. Handmade makes a difference. If you have ever tried handmade uh, stuff, be it fish balls, right? yep, or whatever, you can taste the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the so gong that like chi chong fan versus the yeah. the ones that, uh, you can taste. Yeah. Even soy sauce, I tell you, especially soy handmade sauce. and homemade as well. Yeah, that home recipe. Yes, yes. Yeah. a lot of people come to brew and say, hey, "Where are your machines? You are like a homemade." Mm. I said, yeah, we just have happened to have a, a land that was bought sixty years ago, right? But the way we are making is very much home base, and that's why we're talking about this homemade. I created this program, right, as part of our Nanyang Sauce Academy that teach people to make soy sauce. You no, know, it's really interesting. You can yeah. buy a small kit and you can do it at home. Yes, you yourself. can do it at home. Yeah, but you can't make those brands out there that you see in supermarkets, right? They can't teach you how to make the home, yeah, because they are not making. Yes, yeah, it's automation also. Yeah, yeah, right. You can't buy machines and do that, right? Those mm. machines are three, four meters, two, three meters high, but we have the know-how. Mm. We have the recipe. We are willing to share, but of course, to a certain extent, right? We can teach you, like a tiger can, a cat can teach a tiger everything, but not climb the tree, mm. right? So we will share with you as much as we can, ninety percent, but still that ten percent secret recipe. We will make it for you, but we will not tell you how to do that because we also have to safeguard our recipe. So that is good enough because why they can. In fact, we have participants that show us on the website because we have a community for them to post their pictures 
and ask questions after the the the, the one day half day workshop. Yep. Uh, so they are, the progress is doing not bad, you know. Mm. If they follow our steps, which is a lot of work, a labor of love, it's not going to be easy. But after nine months, one of them is ready into seven months really. <gasps> Two more months to go. Also, the home base only the the home kit also nine months. You yes, brief for nine months or so. Oh yes. wow! Okay. Everything you follow. Right? So I cannot teach you a okay. fast way because I don't know how. Okay. Right, but my my home my home base is following the same as a sauce brewery, except that everything is smaller. The miniature mm. vats, the tray. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah, nine months. I tell you, mm. and not many people stick it through. Some people yeah, give up, but that's okay. But you have the know how. Right, and I got some customers who I so lazy. I, I buy for you like ten dollars <laughs> easier. I said uh, okay lah. Actually, we are we are just trading our time. Yeah, for money. Yeah, I I, 一个人工费，我照顾我我我我酿给你。Then they understand. Uh, sometimes they don't go through. They don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the moment people smell taste, they understand. Those who know, they know. Every episode I do, right? I try and think of. I mean, my podcast. Ah,、uh, I try and think of who would be interested to listen to this guest that I'm having. Yeah. So for you, actually, I think、um, in Singapore's up to our development now, right? Actually, a lot of bus- businesses are facing the issue of succession, and also the this very hard question of reflecting on this whole journey and how the brand or the business or the service will continue. And many of、um, people like my age, thirty plus, forty plus, might be faced with this problem, this issue, this decision: whether to join the family business or not, and whether to take over the family business, be it for sentimental saying, you know, because Akong started it and all.、Um, and for you, the business was like you shared, not doing so well. Do, did you? Find out everything that you can about the business first. So that means you ask to look at the books and everything, and find out the exact picture before you decide to go in. Or was it more of a decision first, then you clean up everything inside later? Ah,、uh, that's a good question. In fact,、um, I do get、uh, friends from schools, you know, my 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 ex classmates, as well as、uh, also people on LinkedIn reach out to me and ask. Can you share experience? And I'm happy to. In fact, I have a small sharing circle. And it's cross industry as well. Cross industry, you know, right?、Yeah. Because because、uh, not everybody is sourced, right? They they could be in food, they could be non food, they could be, you know, at that 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 situation where they're looking. So I can share my experience, but my experience does not mean that you know everybody should follow the same thing, right?、Mm-hmm. So what I say is that、uh, my own speaking from experience is I didn't care because I tell you I start from zero. Why I say zero is because the, the the accounts, the invoices, the client list were all non-existent. It was paper, handwritten invoices, very informal. Yes,、okay. and the the names of the clients was like Atan, <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, Ati,、mm. right, and it was just Ati. But there are so many outlets that could be just be the person and. It's not reflective, you know. The signboard could be something else, but he knows this guy goes by、mm-hmm. his nickname of Ati, right? Yeah. And then, if I went into all this before I started, I would probably not start. <laughs> It takes a bit of foolhardiness, a、okay. bit of shyness, right,、yeah. to go in. But my intention was clear at the start. My intention was first, if Nanyan Sauce were to stop. What soy sauce am I going to eat <laughs>、mm. <laughs> for myself for my kids, right? Yeah, because I've grown up with this taste,、mm. the gu zhao wei, the real soy sauce taste, right? I cannot switch, you know. I'm addicted to it, you know. So my first, <laughs> coming from a foodie, I'm a foodie. My first motivation was personal. So if I give you a blind taste of ten different soy sauce, surely you smell immediately smell. I know it. Smell, I know it. Okay. And the uh, uh, a thing me and my friends like to play. Every time we go to a restaurant, they ask me guess. From the food, what's the brand? What the brand、sauce? they use? Okay. And if I get it right, they buy me.、Mm. They blanja me. If I get it wrong, I I blanja them.、Mm. Chances are, most of the time they blanja me. So the steam fish come out? No, already. Actually, you, you can know one、okay. because because it's very different. Okay. It's a bit. Every brand has got its uniqueness. In Singapore, there are only so many brands, right? In Japan, maybe harder lah. You got thousands of brands. Right.、Yeah. Singapore, you got less than ten. And Malaysia, another couple, right? So what I'm saying is that. Uh, first, there needs to be a bit of foolhardiness. But my intention was clear. First, first intention was personal. 
if not, what will my kids eat? What will we eat, right? My wife will kill me if I don't do something about it. Number two reason was that if um, I stop, I felt would be not responsible to my grandfather because I was a very naughty kid, mm. you know? I was always playing and making a nuisance of myself more than working in the factory and helping out. I would spill soy sauce, I would do all this. And he would get so angry at me. He always asked me one question. When will you mature and grow up? When will you be Tai Tai? Mm. Right? In Hokkien. Yeah. I said, 12 years old. Because that's primary six. A little did I know. He left at 12 years old. So, I don't know. I always felt like maybe I should have said 20 years old. Then he can live longer. Mm. I don't know. I just... I had this thing very personal I seldom share but because this oh, podcast Oh, you said 12 years old Yeah, okay. and then, you know, so and I witnessed during his time we were doing well right? During the 60s, 70s, 80s in fact, I have customers who I meet today and one of them used to run a provision shop and say, oh Nanyang, I've heard for 7-8 years I've heard for you only two big ones she said I hear this story then what happened? you know, what happened? Happened. And what happened was the insistence. Yeah, what happened after that was insistence was good, but mm. we missed out because he was the driver, he was the entrepreneur, he was the patriot of the family. Mm. So when he he left, he didn't have a will. Back in those days, who would do a will? Yeah. Succession planning. Yeah. He left at 70 years old, still young, you know, 70, right? But did none of this happen, right? So after he left us in 1996, the business went downhill. So we missed e-commerce. We didn't have a website when I came in. We didn't have supermarket presence. We didn't have an invoice system. We didn't have a clientele list. We didn't have a sales team. The whole factory was just run with four people. We didn't have hire. You know, so... Oh, the whole factory was run with four people? Yes, they are Superman. Oh, wow. We call that Superman and okay. Superwoman, right? Yeah. Everybody can do everything. So, oh, the yeah. And it's not a small factory. It's a three-story standalone building. Right? But of course... Right? No, 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 no sales, no marketing, no PR. Nobody knows. Only the old customers know. And some of these old customers, when the provision shop they're selling closed down, they thought we closed down together. Because the channel of distribution is Correct. no longer there. Yeah, okay. and then even around Singapore now, those wet market, something in the wet market, there are like 10, 20 stores, only one sell. The yeah. one don't sell, then they would think that Nanya sauce, Jing Le Piao, Mayo Le. So some of them, when they see in Jewel, I got some customers, oh, you're still around, they're so happy. Because it's like finding your favourite candy, you know, from yeah. childhood, right? Yeah, yeah so, so, so there yeah. was no clear... Finding the favourite candy from childhood. Correct. Yeah. It's like you see that and then your yeah. eyes light up, right? So it is that clear intention. My clear intention is I saw the business go down, but I said, one day I'm going to do something about it. And maybe that's why I started my business early. At about 20 years old, I started my business, my own business. Actually, all along, I want to come in. I didn't want to go to university. I want to come in and help. But always my mom says no. Actually, this is not my business also because it was father to son, right? It's my mom's other business. Mm. Yeah. So I never had uh, any kind of inkling that one day it would be me to take over. So I said, okay, la, I, I, if I can help, I do some marketing, do a website, I do. But if I can't, then... I go start my own, right? So in the end, I started my own. I was doing my own business. They know what to do, learn the ropes, you know, and of how to run a business, how to do finance, how to do marketing, PR, blah, 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 everything, right? So I was doing that for a good 10 over years, right? And always... And looking into the business yeah, from outside. Correct. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, you know, let me come in. Let me at least get a website done. No, 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 no. So up to the point. So I had to wait for 10 years. A most a good until I was uh, 33 right so 10 over years of running your own business and fortunately looking back that helped right because once you know right you can count you know yeah. how to deal with clients you know how to yeah so so that helped but the clear intention was was I want to make something of it right and I want to I would say I won't say I want to grow it to a million dollar business. I want to at least keep it going, right? And then the third thing I did when I came back into the business was first 
I had to answer the nagging question in my mind. Why are we losing money though our source is good? So I went to do my research. Mm-hmm. That's how I asked the question, right? Do you do research? I went to 13 source breweries around Asia. Malaysia, I went to Philippines, I went to China, I went to Japan, blah, blah, blah. And visit them. I want to find out what, but I didn't visit the Singapore ones mm. out of respect because we know each other. So I said, I go and visit outside. Why is it that other people can make it with the cost? Because I see the price people are selling. My gosh, $3, $2, right? I sell that price, I lose money. Why is it people can sell that price, give the supermarket a cut and still make money? Mm-hmm. And I found the reason. What's the reason? Because they have changed. They are using the fast way now. Okay. In the past, I taught everybody, before I did my tour, I taught everybody is like us. Okay. Then I realized that, wow, nobody okay. do like us anymore. I'll give you a quick story. I went to the biggest one in China. Because, you know, many football fields. Mm. I walked in and they had a tour. This was pre-COVID time. So I walked in and I asked the production. Hey, what's your sentalian? What's your production capacity? He told me a big number. I said, is that a year? A month? I said, no. A day? It's an hour. An hour? Oh. So they go by what? Liters, uh, the measurement? Yeah, I can't remember. The bottles, uh, how many bottles okay. you can produce. Right? An hour, okay. Man, I was disappointed. Okay. I wanted to leave already. I said, <laughs> mm. one It's like you see the car go and then you are walking, you know? The speed of a car versus a person walking. But then after that, I said, okay, like, let's, 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 since I'm here, I flew in, uh, let's carry on. So he brought me to level two. It was a big museum, bigger than, in fact, I think, uh, two, three thousand square feet. And there were bronze statues, you know, like those along Singapore River, those bronze statues. Yep. So they were, it was a museum showing how Suez was, was made in their factory 300 years ago. Mm. 300 years ago. So, so I they are Lao Zihao picture. also. Lao Zihao, okay. I start taking picture here, there. And less than a minute, I stopped. And my hair stood up. I'm like, how come these statues with the Qing dynasty, the pigtail, yep. the way they're doing is exactly the same as we are doing Nanyang sauce. That was my aha moment. And my hair literally stood up, you know. All their pictures, I, I, I had pictures in my... My, my training that I, I, I used from that, that museum tour. All those ways, even the equipment they used, the, the beans, those round, round trays, how they boil the beans, was 100% the same way we are doing in Singapore. What is this aha moment? This aha moment is that I think we've got something worth preserving. Because mm. that is 300 years ago. And this is modern day now. And they, that factory, of course, doesn't make it like that anymore, but it was a museum. And all the other factories I went to, none of them were making this way. So I said, wow. So what we have is like discovering an antique in your attic, you know, or in your storeroom that your grandfather has passed behind. It's like, wow, this thing is worth something, you know. Mm. This thing is priceless. Because they don't make like that anymore. None of the Factories I went make like that anymore. I even went to one. I will not say which country or name. And I walked in. The, the factory itself had one factory beside it. It was corroded. The beams were corroded. So I said, is that a, a ex factory, past factory you moved in from World, it looks like a World War II relic to be honest. He said, no. We just shifted there for two years ago. Why does it look so old? I said, oh, can because in the chemical hydrolyzed soy sauce, we use, we use concentrated hydrochloric acid mm. to hydrolyze and speed up the process to make it within a day. And the acid fumes corrode the beams. I was stunned. And that's what we were eating. Uh. Yeah, and we see yeah. it in my eyes, you know. Mm. And then after that, after the tour ended, I gave him my sauce, which is like custom. Right. I meet a friend, I'll make a friend, I give a sauce, somebody I value, right? He was trying it out and say, Oh, thank you. I asked, Can I have your sauce? And he said, He was a bit reluctant. I said, Can I have it? Open it, I'll let it, throw it away, don't eat it. Mm. Oh, I got no. angry. Mm. 
Anh got sad. Sad. Because I've been brought up to believe that making food for people is a very sacred responsibility. Mm. We don't feed people what we don't feed our children. So this is was another aha moment. And these 13 breweries, if I had not done this, I would not know right, that this was something worth preserving. So looking at this, is it then little wonder that a lot of us are like getting cancer? Cancer is becoming like the I would say that first leading disease that kills us. I would say that do a Google yourself. Search for soy sauce, cancer brands. Mm. Take ten seconds. Search soy sauce, cancer brands, or different combination of the words. Okay. What do you find on Google? If you believe Google, mm. if you believe some of the media channels in some countries, some of these sources are banned. Mm. Okay? If you believe, these are not alternative media, these are mainstream media. Just search. It's amazing what Google ha- can, mm. can share with us, right? In some countries, some of these sources are banned mm. because of cancer carcinogenic content. And that comes from the defected soybeans then being used that comes from the chemicals that are being used every country has got different requirements right and some of this technology is so new that they only discover it years later right but for me any kind of food I eat I always ask has my grandfather eaten it has my father eaten it am I eating it always best and also the Chinese wisdom is always that bing chong kou ru yes yeah yeah a whole chong kou chu, I dare not say too much. Mm. Right? Well, as I say, do your own research, guys. Do your own research. That's why now, before I buy anything in supermarket, I search. There are good brands. Mm. Right? But there are also brands that are good in marketing. We are being literally brainwashed. Look at obesity. It's a big problem. Not just in our part of the world. US, everywhere. Right? Junk food is all around. It doesn't mean that uh, that certain things are approved, are selling. It means it's good, mm. right? It just means that you gotta do your own research. Yeah, like I love potato chips. Yeah, and if you look at let's say if you go to NTUC Finance today, right, the price for a pack of potato chips can really there's the there's a range whole range to it. Yeah, you can pay seven dollars for for a pack. Yeah, and you can of course pay one twenty dollars, one twenty for a pack. Right? Let's talk about common fact about Pringles. Mm. We all love it, right? Yep. Is it made of potato? You can Google it. Mm. So it's is there potato inside? I don't know. Okay. Right. Yeah. What I heard from friends, and I, you know, you can Google that. So it's a parabolic, very nice shape. Everything uh, is there. You have to ask yourself, is there oyster in oyster sauce? Is there soy in soy bean? Is there potato in potato chips? There was a research that was done in Hong Kong. Like they, they, they researched the brands of lobster balls. Uh-huh. Like a lot of them didn't even have traces of yeah. lobsters inside. Yes, yeah. because everything can be flavoured these days. Yeah. Flavoured. Because technology is so advanced now, it can let you have that smell and the taste. It can be engineered. Like reverse engineered. Thing. Thing. Yes, ah, okay. like the real thing. Mm. Right? It's like now alternative protein. It's like beef. Yeah. It looks like the blood comes out, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah. They, they have a certain kind of thing that comes out, right? Right? But it, it looks like it. And, and how, what are our children going to be eating? So, with the food industry, it's not like, for example, toilet paper. <laughs> Whether you use the real paper or you use a kind of paper compound, mm. doesn't matter. You just wipe it. It's external, right? Right, or batteries, right? It's external. It's important, but it's external. Yeah. But what you're consuming, your drinks, the food, the ingredients, the sauce, what goes in, may not necessarily come out. So that that whole awakening for me has led me on this journey. Not just for my own industry or sources, but as a whole on food. Then I realized, for example, this is also general information, right? Certain countries, if a food is genetically modified, you have to label it genetically modified. Mm. Certain countries, if a food is genetically modified, 
you don't have to label it genetically modified. So in Singapore, you can do your own check. Okay, right? Every country has its own. So the best is you do your own research, because don't save on that, right? Because end of the day, right? Every country is different, right? But I would say generally, right? Singapore is pretty high, right, on food safety standards. Yep. However, right, Singapore does not distinguish much between whether something is artisanal, handmade, or something that is mass produced using chemicals and machines. Why? Because we don't have an abundance of manpower here. Mm. You understand? Yeah, because we have a population to feed. We need to import our food. Right, yeah. So it is uh, on the owners of every individual. Whether you are caring for your parents, you are caring for your kids, you are caring for your spouses, your siblings, spend that ten, fifteen, twenty minutes researching and only get news that is from verified sources, yeah, not fake mm, news. Yeah. Right. And if you do your homework, you will realize. Real potato, for example, I had my first taste of real potato chips. You know where? In Bhutan. Oh, it's real. Okay. Right? I mean, I saw the the guys. Yeah. Right. My organic rice never tasted so good. Red rice, and you know, I'm not a person that that I'm more a meat person than a vegetable person, right? So I remember one trip incident. I was in Bhutan, and my host. You know, it was very nice, right? We were in a in a country house, and they served us uh, a meal, right? And it was organically homegrown vegetables. So there were carrots, there was cabbage, and a few others. So my first impression when I saw that, I, I look at my wife, and say, no meat, no meat. <laughs> But do you know, that was the first time I tried organic carrots. I finished the whole bowl of carrots. My wife was astounded because each of us had a bowl. It's like, Where to become bugs money? Yeah, mm. <laughs> when you start finishing carrots, I said because it tastes so sweet and so nice. Yeah, organic carrots is really nice. Yeah, you just yeah. can't stop eating, right? Yeah. So, so, so that is the whole organic thing and soy sauce. Let me give you an interesting fact. Many people don't realize. Common, common thing people tell me is, Ken, I don't put a lot of soy sauce. I don't cook a lot. Doesn't matter. One day I just put one spoon. I doesn't matter whether I'm eating the real thing or it's not the real thing. I say. Supposing so, I went to do my calculation. Supposing every day you just use one teaspoon, it's about five ml, right? Teaspoon of soy sauce in a day, and chances are you use more than that, right? Because morning you got soft boiled eggs, afternoon yeah. you got night you got cooking, for example. Chances are you use more than that. But just supposing, being conservative, every day you use one teaspoon, five ten ml of soy sauce. By the time a person reaches sixty years old. He or she will consume how much soy sauce? How much? Let me blow your mind away. Fifty over bottles of one point five liter soy sauce. Ah, one point five liter soy sauce. Fifty over liters, you know. Fifty okay. over bottles. Okay. I can't remember that exactly. Fifty over bottles of one point five liter. You know the water that you drink. Yep. Our Coke bottle. Yeah. Yep. One point five liter. Fifty over bottles you have consumed by sixty years old, and life expectancy chances are. More, you know? mm. yeah, right. And that's how much you have consumed. So you don't tell me that you take a little bit only, mm. dian dian. But a little bit true. Then anyway, then go for the real thing. If you can afford it, go for the real thing, and everyone can afford it. Yep. It's a matter of whether you make the switch or the choice. Yeah, yeah. So so sauce legend was created because customers were also asking me, "Hey, oyster sauce? I don't dare to put because why outside all MSG? There's no oyster in oyster sauce. Can you believe that?" I have a customer from Hong Kong. She tell he tells me that his cousin is allergic to seafood, mm. but can take the popular oh, brand of oyster sauce. Oyster sauce, okay. I was mind blown. Then I asked him, "Then what kind of oyster sauce is real oyster sauce?" So eventually, I found this one. Fish sauce. A lot of people tell me fish sauce the best is whatever, right? It's good. Then I, when I tasted real fish sauce, that's unprocessed, because a lot of processing happens, right? Unprocessed one. I was like, wow. It's actually not just smelly. Mm. That is actually nice to cook with. 
and then you oyster so- uh, you got the soy sauce, you got sriracha chili. You can taste after a while. And the best, you know what's the best litmus test? Litmus test mm. for a sauce. Give it to a child. Okay. Okay, you can't give chili to a child, right? But give soy sauce a little bit. Add it a little bit to the food. You know why? Because a child's taste buds are unadulterated. Okay. Right? They know what's natural umami. Their re- umami receptors are natural. Uh-huh. So we have many, many cases. Customers that ask, hey, I use your sauce, although more expensive. But for my kids. I said, why don't you use it yourself? I said, oh, because when I use my kids, huh, they finish their food. Mm. I'm like, that means that is good stuff because the kids are not like us, right? If we have been, for example, always using the commercial ones, yeah. then we will think the commercial is the real one. Mm. I give you a simple analogy. Now, freshly squeezed oranges, we know, right? Yep. There's freshly squeezed oranges. But there's also the commercial oranges. Yep. The kind you get buffet lines. You get a tub of concentrate you mix with water, right? But if forever a person is taking this one, they will not know what is freshly squeezed orange juice. Mm. Right, so nanyan sauce is like the freshly squeezed orange juice. This is like the commercial one. And it one day when they have it, then they taste the pulp and everything. Yeah. And, then they and there's a that. hybrid, you know? You have one that is commercial, but they put in the pulp. Those kind that we buy ah. off the supermarket. So with all. the pulp, you think it's real. Mm. And now I got you excited. Yeah. You smell it, taste it. And tell me. Make it two-way. Your show is all about authenticity, right? So tell me. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Ken, so... Knowing about the food industry now, right? Has it changed your habits when it comes to... Do you buy organic vegetables now? Yes. Nowadays? Yes. So you only in use fact, organic? In fact, I buy vegetables that have holes in them. Okay. That's one litmus test, right? Mm. Okay? The worms are eating it. Mm. Yeah, this one is a little bit tight. You have to... Yeah. So, when my mom was not well, mm-hmm. uh, we gave her a organic diet. Mm-hmm. And that's why I know the taste of organic carrots. Like we would, she was uh, on organic carrots, papaya, organic papaya, uh. organic uh, kai lan. Because some vegetables too liang, so not good. So, you know, kai lan, uh, chai sing. And it's totally different. The the place I get it, all, all these supplies, right, is I go to this shop, Yes Natural at Geylang, Aljunit MRT there. They have a bakery, they have a supermarket, and they have a restaurant. It's yes. organic, then it's a uh, vegetarian, so I get my food from there. Mm-hmm. It's my first time trying this. Okay. I've if you have a spoon, it helps. <gasps> you know the my first impression, uh, smelling this right, it smells like Japanese soy sauce to me. You know, we go eat sushi, then yeah. the soy sauce smells different from our yeah. tahua and our. I'm going to. You have a spoon. Or mm. maybe you can pour it in the cup if you like. Or no, I may mean, pour it here. I just want to like dip it and like yeah, taste it, right? Sure. Okay. You put it your thumb, your thumb. Oh, okay. Yeah, you invert it. That's one way. You lick it. Yeah. It's not sea kiam. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like just salty, right? Yeah, it's not sea kiam. And you, after that, you have the aftertaste. Mm. A little bit of sweetness, very light. And then you got the bean. You had a bean taste. Mm. And you got a tingling sensation from your tongue mm. to the back. Or the tongue. You know mm. why? Because there's umami receptors. Your umami receptors are all around. The salty part is just the front. Mm. Yeah. So what's umami? Umami is the fifth taste. It is the elusive taste, Right? That makes you go, wah, ho jia. What is umami in Mandarin? Suan tian ku la. Xian. 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 Xian bu shi xian na. Okay. Xian shi hai xian de xian. Yeah. The xian wei. Alright. In Hokkien, we simply call kiam mm. But in Japanese, uh, this word umami, translate to English, is called delicious taste. Okay. Yeah. It's that taste that you smell. Mm. Don't believe me, you try an experiment, okay? You just open the soy sauce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Put it to your nose, close mm. your eyes mm-hmm. for 10 seconds. Mm. Okay? And you smell it. So previously, right now I read the ingredients are non-GMO soy sauce. So I really like to drink Tao Hui Zui. Yeah. Tao Hui And there was one, someone told me that it's not healthy to drink a lot of Tao Hui Zui because the soybeans are all 
genetically modified. Some brands I see, they use the word non-GMO as well. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it's always good to get verified. Like I mean, even those at hawker centers, you know, mm-hmm. the Tao Hui Zui. Someone told me that it's not very healthy to drink of Tao Hui yeah, Zui. I guess because of price. Yeah. You know, so that, that being said, it doesn't mean cheap. Uh, it's, it's GMO. You smell for about 10 seconds. Mm. Do you feel something in the inside of your cheeks? Just close your eyes. 10 seconds, right? Yeah, five more seconds. You see something being produced on the inside of your cheeks? Mm. What is that? Inside of the cheeks. Saliva. Ah. You know why? Because your nose mm. and your tongue is all connected, right? Imagine you have a cold, everything is connected. So this is because your umami receptors are being re- activated. Mm. And mm-hmm. it sends signal to your brain and say, Hey, hold ya. There's okay. something good. Okay. There's umami. Start producing saliva and that's why you have that. So how we found that is because people who come to the shops will always have that. And after a workshop, just walking around, 10, 15 minutes, they always say, oh, I'm hungry already. Hungry I'm hungry already you know. yeah, yeah, exactly And that's natural There's nothing this, We are wired this way Evolution Thousands of years Have caught us To this mm. Natural umami Do not need MSG mm. Right In fact Natural umami Beats Man-made umami mm. right? Man-made umami Is called MSG In fact The one who coined The word umami Is the same guy Who created MSG Because he wanted to copy and mimic the umami taste without nine months. Okay. Right? But can you imagine technology 100 years ago? Is it the advance? Mm. All right. Yeah. So with any man-made things, a lot of health issues come up. Now on the internet, if you Google MSG, is it health, healthy, harmful? You've got two schools of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very polarizing. Yeah. Right? It's either you love it or you hate it. I don't like to use MSG in my cooking. Yeah. But I have people, I met people, you know, not usually not my customers, but yeah. I met people that swear by MSG. And my, my, mm. my, my thing I always say, whether you love MSG or you don't, that's fine. Mm. But if you have the real orange juice, right? Why do you want to drink the orange concentrate? Mm. It might taste sweet, it might taste sour. The only reason I can think of is because of the price. Mm. You know what I mean? Or maybe you don't know the real thing. Yeah, or maybe you don't know the real thing. Yeah. Right? But I think increasingly... Uh, not just our brand, but some Japanese brands, they are also getting a lot of awareness now. Because I think it is a whole renaissance of O is good, O is go, O is new, new. O For almost new. everything, you know, furniture, exactly. food. Mid-century, you got yeah. vintage. And you see a whole renaissance of all these fermented teas like kombucha, kefir, you know, all these things that are out there. Two nights ago, I was just at my grandfather's house. We were watching Channel 8 and it was Ponsak going to Japan to visit this uh, miso maker. Yeah. Artisan miso. And, you know, they opened the door to the back. Yeah. Like the backyard, there's this shelter, right? Inside are all the what as well. Yes. Like fermenting misos and Correct. All. Yeah. Correct. And, you know, people are eating kimchi. So my thing is that if you don't have time for all this, just take naturally fermented soy sauce. And you try this. You or somebody, whoever wants to try this, if you try switching entirely to nanyan sauce, after a while, you can't just be one time, right? Maybe six months, uh, seven months, eight months down the road. You start to realize something different. Something magical happens. What is it? You try. Then you will realize. You will feel the energy different. You will feel yourself getting younger. Hmm. I explained to you why also. I went to research. I said, why is it that? Because I had a, a, a colleague, right, who joined me five years ago. She was not from the industry. Miss not our family member. Mm-hmm. She came from banking and finance, you know. She joined me from the outside. And this five years, every time she has gathering, her friends say, why oh, oh, you look younger? Reverse, younger, reverse younger. aging. Yeah. Okay. And it's over time, you know. It's not like immediate, wow. It's not like those in it. Then after that, she was very curious. She went to research. And she told me that it was because of an ingredient inside. Onion sauce called kojic acid. Kojic acid is extracted only from naturally fermented soybeans. And it's put into a lot of beauty products like your whitener, okay. your creams, everything. And 
they extract and just put a little bit on. Soya beans and soybeans are different. Eh? Soybeans and the soybeans is just whether it's the English or the American. Oh, so the tou hua sui soybeans are the jiang qing soybeans. Yes. So, the word soya, S-O-Y-A. Okay. And soy, S-O-Y. It's just American and uh, UK mm. difference, uh, British oh. in terms of spelling. Mm. But it's the same. We use the same, but whether where is it from? La? Because soya beans got a lot. I have a friend who does a uh, uh, hua sui in Singapore. Ah. Chen Sun Mei. Ah, oh, Chen Sun Mei. Yeah. Yeah, he is also it? reverse aging, uh, that guy. Is it? And he also swears by his product also. Uh, second yeah. or third gen already, right? He is now the third gen. Wow. And he and his siblings are all inside the business. His wow. father is still uh, in the business as well. Oh. But the difference with him and yours would be, uh, he grew up in the business, so his first job is in the business. Oh, nice. And he has been in the business uh, all the while. Mm-hmm. So he does the ops. No, 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 sorry. He does the um, outside facing. Yeah. Uh, the customers, the uh, clients, the brother does the ops. Oh, wow. So does the factory and all. Then the sister does the accounts. That's the best. Family. Yeah. Romantically, it's hopefully it's like that. Yes. But we also know that, I mean, I had the chance to uh, look at a lot of family business and sometimes in family businesses, of course, the best case scenario is Tuan Jie, Jusili Liang. There will be differences. There will always be differences. Even, even with non-family members. Mm. But, but not the members, we can fire them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, the thing is, they are working, family members work for a bigger reason than just business. So when it comes to the crunch, when it comes to good times, we don't say, right? When it comes to tough times, right? As every business, there's ups and downs. It is that kinship that bonds. So I'm the believer on the side of believing that Although it is challenging, although, you know, you can't fire, although, but there is something else that is, you don't you believe in something they call genes, uh, mm. right? There is something that people will go the extra mile. That's why, you know, in the West, uh, if you buy milk, for example, from a producer that says it's family owned, family operated, people are willing to pay a premium for it because they know that there's a little bit extra that is not just about margins. It's also mm. about legacy. Of course. Of it's course. also about kinship. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think actually Singaporeans are recognising that, you know. Slowly, yes. And right. that's why, and especially during COVID as well, you see a lot of uh, all these uh, home-based yes. businesses that's right. that sells the amas or kueh. Yes. You know, sells the ama samba chili and all. Yes. And they're doing very well on online. Absolutely. And people, people are willing to pay the premium for that home yes. cook taste and their recipe. And yes, because nowadays, right, there's a lot of central kitchen that is about um, increasing the production. Efficiency. And then, correct. Mm-hmm. And, and you do believe, right, that if you go to a hawker versus a food court, you go to a hawker centre, generally people will say the standard of food is higher higher than a food court. Generally, lah, that's, not, that's not, it's a stereotype. But generally, you think that if it's the uncle who's doing the cha kui tiao and he looks like his age and he, he has got like maybe a family member or two, chances are you think that, okay, not bad. Versus you go to one that is, you know, it looks very commercial, right? Mm-hmm. So so one of the things that, that I'm very um, intrigued and of course uh, very bothered by is the fact that over the last one year, if you notice, a lot of F&Bs are closing down. And these are old brands. These are family-based business that have been around for generations, two, three, four generations because of all the factors that we all know and which I will not talk about, right? Yep. But one of the things that I ask myself, what can I do? I mean, you know, it's a, I'm just one small uh, business, right? But increasingly, I find that there might be something that, 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 that could be done. The marketing? So to, no, not the marketing. Okay. So that their recipes and their legacies can live on beyond them. Okay. And that is where Sauce Legend comes in. They are sources. Because, you see, a lot of the factors, right, cannot be changed because these are macro factors. Rising ingredient costs, rising electricity costs, your water, electricity bill go up, your manpower, 很难情人, 
and they are already a certain age, they want to retire. But if you notice that a lot of our food, the intangible cultural heritage of our hawker food, which is a recognized by UNESCO, right, mm. is down to the source. So, increasingly, we have people talking to us, and you know, as part of Source Legend about preserving cultural heritage, right. We are creating a range of sauces based on their recipes. So, for example, mm. let's say a laksa. Yeah. Let me contextualize it, right? A laksa, somebody who's making laksa lor mee, right? Besides the noodles, beside the fish cake, beside the egg, beside the prawn. It's the rumpa. La, the, yeah, the yeah. rumpa, yeah. The, the sauce that goes into it, right? So, if the business can't carry on in its original form, whether you find a better location, rent is still going to be high. La, right? That's, let's face it. Yeah. But one way it can live on is if we can work and create that sauce as in a bottle. That laksa. Ah, okay. that laksa sauce. So it's not commercial brand laksa sauce. It's ABC or XYZ, uh, 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 Da Jie or Topayo something, Amokyo something, right? Uh, that store name. Long Fong, whatever, yeah? laksa sauce. Mm. You understand? So that it lives on. And this person, the creator, gets a steady source of revenue. But the cost is very high. Mm. Yes. Because of, like when we print something, like if you print one piece 30 cents, you print in bulk, then it's... Exactly. Yeah, so, then so, so if we start thinking from a cost point of view, nobody would do. That's why none mm. of the commercial makers are doing. Yeah. But I... I'm a romantic. Okay. I think, because you see, typical commercial maker, will, you need MOQ, one pallet. That's like uh, mm. 2,000 bottles. You don't have this, I don't do for you. Minimum order quantity. Ah, minimum okay. order quantity. But okay. I say, hey, maybe this is something interesting and we are handmade, right? So I'm not constrained by machine or maybe I do 50 bottles. I put it up at my shop. Sauce legend. Oh, yeah, sauce legend, okay. Right? Ah, so, so we are preserving okay. this laksa for their customer. Okay, okay. So, auntie meal too well. But, ta xian the laksa, can you make it ba kwai, chi kwai? So, you go back and prepare your own fish ah, cake, your own ham, and correct. all. You can still have that taste. Because la. okay. a lot of it, right, it's very tedious, yes. But we are willing to put in the tedious work. Mm. Because we are used to tedious. There's nothing more tedious than making soy sauce. Eh? Nine months, right? Nine months, yeah. yeah. I, I can pow, I can do the rump. I say, okay, and I don't put my brand, nine years sauce. I say, respect your brand. I pay royalties. I work with you. Agreement, recipe, right? Every bottle so I give you royalties. Passive income. So you want Who Source Legend to be this platform? Yes, it mm. is the platform. And it is the, 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 the way, the channel for preserving food heritage. Mm. You know, I can do 50 bottles for her because to me, I can do it. I'm willing to do it. It doesn't make money commercially, like you said. But will it cover the cost? Yes. If my cost of my ingredient is $5, if I sell it at $7, I make $2. Right? Something like that. Mm. Right? But do I have to sell it at $15, $20 to make sense? No, I don't have to. I can still put it below $10. So we have started that. In fact, we have started with a very popular home chef, right? Who is also principles we align. It's called the silver chef. Okay. He's retired. Right? And he and his wife started a lot of cooking videos on Instagram, YouTube. And he's doing it out of interest and as well as helping teach people how to cook. His recipes are fantastic. We launched one that is the chicken rice paste. Chicken rice drizzle. Yeah, I saw the chicken rice. So, so that is the idea correct. behind the laksa one. Okay, correct. okay. The silver chef right now is chicken. Now there could be laksa, it could be lor mee. I saw it at NTUC Finest. The, the what? Chicken the rice? chicken rice. Uh. Oh, haven't, we haven't put in it. Another one, shop. the chicken... Uh, there's somebody another else. chicken... No, there's one, your brand one, there's some chicken something. Uh. Chicken rice chili. Chicken rice chili. Uh, chili yeah. is our own. So we have it. But the, what I'm talking about is a new collaboration, just about one month old. At Sauce Legend, mm-hmm. where we make the thing for him, small batches, we do like 50 each time. The first time we put, right, his followers buy out already. Because he's, he got people who, because peop- he's, he's doing not for commercial, right? So he shows the recipe, his recipe really work. It's very important, your recipe mm-hmm. must, must be clear. So he's got like a rice cooker series. So he teaches people how to use 
rice cooker to cook chicken rice. Mm. Designed for the busy mum. So that kind of way is the way that I feel we can continue to preserve our Singapore food heritage. Not in the original form, where you can go and pay $5 for a bowl of laksa, $4, right? But in the paste form. And we, you can buy noodles from somewhere, you can buy yeah. fish cake from somewhere, you can buy prawns. And it may take you five minutes or ten minutes, but if most of the work is done in a creative Because the sauce, taste is in there. Ah, because a lot of our dishes in hawker food, you realise, is sauce-based. Why? Because they like the lor mee. Yep. You see how they cook the lor mee, right? Yep. They heat the, then they put the tzak. Yeah. I just love lor mee. Yeah, I love also. I'm getting so hungry mee. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. getting very hungry as we're talking, you know. Mm. So, yeah, things like that. I, I'm just saying, generally, I see their scope. So, we, 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 we throw it out. In fact, in fact, we have, we are now talking to some of these uh, hawkers and say that, hey, what about we produce for you? So, we bear out the cost, the printing, everything. You don't have to come out with a cent because most of the makers out there, you have to pay first. I make a thousand bottles for you, you pay me first. Mm-hmm. If not, I don't make. No MOQ, I don't make. But I say, I bear all the cost. You enjoy passive income. Mm. Right? At first, they, of course, the reaction is, oh, is it too good to be true? Yeah, exactly. If I you say, like well, this is my shop. You come to my shop, you see there's Silver Chef. And, uh, and it takes some time, but of course, if we are sincere and of course not all 10 will say yes but maybe 5 or 3 or 6 then we help save 3 or 5 or 6 brands mm. we're not aiming for the sky but we just want to help like the starfish story the one that yeah, you throw everyone you see yeah but, but in a way we are also helping ourselves right it's a two way thing right because then what we do is that we have unique sources for my customers they are natural not using MSG now some of the hawkers do use MSG then we we have talked to them we say hey Maybe can I swap that out? I use a better soy sauce, so I don't need MSG. Can we kind of swap it out? And the base ingredients are all the existing ingredients. So, for example, a lot of times when they cook, there's oyster sauce involved. Yep. So instead of using the commercial one that's like $8 a tub or 5 liters, I'm using a real oyster sauce. So will the taste be better? Mm. Of course. So by using this real oyster sauce, the $23 a bottle, the one that I'm bringing in, mm. I am also extending his that business. That Hong Kong one. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Also give him business so that he gets more sales. $23 a mm. water. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, there's an example of how this ecosystem, the big dream can work. Hawkers provide the recipe, we provide the raw ingredients, the ingredients, and we are the sauce maker with a food license to make sauces. So the ingredients will be the best sauces you can find. The best oyster sauce, fish sauce, everything. Not your commercial ones. Mm. Right? And then we create new sauces using your own name that you may not have used already because you closed down. right? And then customers benefit. I got easy, natural, traditional, handmade sauces that are easy to replicate and cook at home. Mm. I think that's how uh, this, the hawkers or their legacy can live on. The taste can live on. The taste can live on. So as much as you are very romantic about this heritage and this passing on passing on of taste, you are still running a business at the end of the day. Yes. You know, you have bills to be paid, yes. you have staff roles to be fulfilled and all. Yeah. How do you look at the overall strategy of Nanyang Sauce as a business now? How many percent will come from the traditional business? And... So for someone who is looking to innovate their business, right? What is this process or this journey like? It's a very layered question. New I revenue, lot, you know. Yeah, know. There's, there's quite a lot of aspects to it, but I will try to answer the best I can. Is that we are not driven by numbers. Okay? I've had numerous uh, uh, people, journalists, and uh, you know, people who interview me, Ask what are your production numbers? What are your sales numbers? Uh? I say I don't. I don't know. You're shocked. Uh, you run a plan. You don't know your numbers. <sighs> I say because when I sell finish, I make another batch. Okay. I have limited X number of pots or vats in my soy sauce brewery. That's right. So is there someone else in the company who knows the number? Yes, but we somebody who does the bookkeeping, who does okay. the accounts, right? Who we'll knows know numbers, a bit more. Okay. But we, we, when we say we are not looking at the numbers, it's not that we are not doing bookkeeping. Bookkeeping or paying the bills. We are. We're just not looking at it. 
as a driving force for innovation. That does not mean we can lose a lot of money because we're not like a big company like Apple and you know they can spend a lot of R and D and afford to yeah. burn right cash. Not that they do, but we are not a cash burning company. If we make a dollar, we spend a dollar. Oh no, we make a dollar, we spend like twenty cents, right? And then we have to roll the money. So what we do is that we look at it and say, okay, innovation must be driven by consumers. What do consumers want? A lot of my innovations are based on what customers are telling me. So, for example, I told you about a keychain. Yeah, this customer telling me, "Can you make a small one?" Mm. And then after, I can top up from the bottle. Yeah, I make that. Mm. Right. Another one on my soy salt. You know the the yeah the, the crystal crystal salt, salt, uh, one bottle, the, the, small bottle. the, the legendary uh, one mm. that's made waves around the world. So this Nanyan soy salt also came about because of customer request. Mm. I was a Hong Kong customer when I first opened my shop at East Coast five years ago. He came down, and he asked me, with his son, I remember. He said, "Where do I? How do I buy the salt? I want twenty bottles." So he's a foodie, lah. Yeah, he's a foodie. For sure, foodie. Yeah. So I said, at that time, I didn't know the value of this salt. Mm. I said, I don't sell salt. I sell soy sauce. He said, but I came all the way down because it's not on your website. It's not on your e-commerce website where you can click and buy. But you have the pots. You have the those big. They know because you're artisan, so you should have it. Yeah, I mm. said I have it. Uh, let me call my mom. He said, Yeah, yeah, I have. Say, so I said I was very honest with you. I said, Sir, I, I don't know how to sell you. How many grams? Yeah. Bottle. What's the size? What do you use it for? So it's like he name was, your price. Correct. Uh. He was a gentleman. If he tell me that it's a dollar, I will sell him a dollar. Okay. Right. But he was a gentleman. He shared with me. Uh, my customers are amazing. I have the best customers in the world. He shared me what's the value of it. He said in Hong Kong, he had to go to this old maker. Every time he buy, he would just give him a small satchel. He said, "This is for for soup, for steak, blah blah blah." He said, "I'll pay you." I'll pay you. And that's how I created that product. Now it looks fancier, mm. in a box, like a handphone box, and then with a caviar glass jar. You know, looks like caviar, and the price is still pretty much the same. Mm. But the value is in the salt, so our innovation has always been customer driven. That's always my belief. Whether it makes money or not, first time when I hear it, okay, I, I wouldn't do anything. But when I hear it two or three times, like another of our service, which is getting very very popular, is called the bespoke service. The I one you can customize. The yes, I customize the taste. I sell by the jar, just like uh. whiskey sell by the barrel. So it started when a customer told me, "Ken, you should look at what wine is doing." They're selling by the jar. Why don't you do it like like the the vet, like fifty hundred liters? I said no, it's too much trouble. He said, but look at it. So I didn't do anything about it, right? Because I was so busy, so many things, and there's still only less than ten of us in the factory. Why do you have time to do all that, right? There's a skill I can do, like my taste preference, like yes. saltier and all. Yes, that's right. So there's a matrix, and that took time to come up, right? <gasps> so what what transpired was the fact that two or three customers after him. He repeatedly tell me, "Can I want my own soy sauce?" So you all will start a vat for them. Then nine yes. months later, they buy that. Yes, that whole the whole thing. Means the whole thing. They prepay. It means okay. They, they 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 confirm the taste. So then we realize that hey, there's a demand. Much as my soy sauce is nice, but some people want their own soy sauce, their own taste. There was that okay. personal connection, either as a gift, right, or just I just like a little bit more sweet because taste is personal, right. I like more sweet. I like more salty. I like less salty. I APS like as per their cooking correct. style. And so all. we reverse engineer, mm. right? And we kind of say create a matrix, and then we have that taste matrix, and then we say, okay, this is what it is. This is what is required. This is a bit of science to it to complement our art, right? Mm. And then we, we when we create that, then we say, okay, nine months later. So in fact, that has taken off. It's the first in the world. Nobody can make it because you go to Kiko Man, they're not going to do it, mm. right? I mean. Such a small, right? And they don't even have the funds, right? Mm. So, so, it, so it has created a nice little. Yeah, it's a very interesting blue uh. ocean thing, right? Which again, it's not I think of it. I don't claim credit for it. It's my customers. That's why I say we are the best customers. Customers they use our sauce and they recommend and use us as gift and they, and, and it's because of that they taught me so much, right? So I see myself as a conduit to pass it on. Whatever knowledge I'm sharing with you, when I came in five years ago, I didn't know all this, but because they tell me and I, do you get know I me? Mean? So, so that that innovation is not driven by dollars and cents, because if I count, I say one two customer, 
I said enough people. The gut feel. He said you two or three people, three or four. Then they tell you, okay, let's do. And but we can do small batch first. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's how we focus on a customer led innovation. It sounds very easy. No, it sounds like it's, it sounds crazy it as sounds a crazy. business. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's how we continue. And of course, we have had our failures. We have had things that didn't work, right? But again, because we are small enough, we we, we adjust. Very nimble, la. Yeah, we just adjust ourselves yeah. and then and find out what works. So your customers, you just meet a bigger and bigger foodie, la. more sophisticated foodie yeah. all the time, right? Yeah, and my customers yeah. up level also. Yeah. Their foodiness level, yeah. experience level up, up, up. They mm. evolve also, right? Mm. Right, and they're telling me about like this sort from France that is like super duper, and then you know ask me to bring it in and add it in there and learn a bit about French sort, right? And then there's this kind of cooking, you know, all these things that. So I see myself as a sponge mm. and a channel for learning all this and then disseminating it now. For business in Nanyang sauce, right? The uh, the dilemma is that if your marketing is superb. And a lot of people start buying your sauce, but you only have a fixed quantity that the factory can yeah. churn out yeah. every every year, right? Yeah. Because of the number of vats yeah. that you have and all the nine months process. So, how do you approach marketing, and what's the end game for marketing? Okay, so our marketing, we only have one principle: mm. authenticity. What do I mean by that? Is that I think, right? Always best. Remember, I keep saying this. Right? The best form of marketing is not what I tell you. It's word of mouth. Yes, it's what your friend tells you. Yeah. Hey, I try this. Very nice. My kid finally finished the food. Or my food suddenly now tastes like a Michelin restaurant kind of example. Hey, Ho Jia, I just put it in the steam fish. The fish suddenly come alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the taste, right? Yeah. So that's that's I I feel the most traditional the most real la. because no matter what people tell you be it on social media or traditional media yeah, of course of course you need a start right but for us our value for marketing has always been authenticity so we when we have this guiding principle authenticity it runs contrary to a lot of um, ways of marketing out there um, so for example one of the things we do is that uh, we don't consciously do it but so far, the reviews, if you type Nanyan Sauce, the Google reviews or Facebook reviews are all from customers. Mm. We didn't so-called... Ask for it, no. Yeah, we didn't, you know, in a way, it's not a sponsored okay. review. Eh? I mean, they're sponsored. So, authenticity is one. And that also stems from the fact that we didn't have the money to pay all this as well, right? To be honest. Because a part of my cost close to my ingredients and the time it takes to ferment. So some common misperceptions we always get inquiries from agencies and you know their perception is that we must be very rich because you're selling a bottle of sauce at a few times the price. But our margin is lower than the commercial ones. Do you know that? Mm. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. So after I explain to them and they try, then they understand. It's not surprising. Actually. Yeah, correct. Yeah. But but nine months, eh? It's how, not mu- how much time? Because yeah. because the concept perception is that all the sauces are the same. All soy sauce are nine months. That's not true. So they just look at the price on the shelf. Yeah. So and so they think that you must be making so much more than correct, other people. Correct. Correct. Okay. So so I mean, it's a positive problem, but also a negative problem. But what I want to say is that. I, the marketing part of things, right? It's always about what is your guiding principle. My guiding principle is authenticity. We can have um, a good marketing campaign, right? Uh, uh, slow and steady. I, I always feel we must communicate what's true, what's real. And of course, the good, ugly and the bad, right? I mean, our downside is that our concern of cost management, our cost has gone up easily 20-30%, but we have not increased prices. In the last year? In the yeah, last few so months, maybe? Yeah, last one year. Last one year. Okay. But my prices were still the same as uh, five, six years ago when I first came in and created this range. So I'm facing all these challenges, right? But one of the things that you are rightly asked is, will there be a point where we are out of production? Yes. It has happened before. In fact, it has really happened. Mm. Certain ranges are out of stock on Red Mart, online, all that. And it's just because we don't have. So we always have this thing where it's a pre-order where mm. customers, if they don't have the product, they can kind of pre-order. They don't have to pay first, it's just indicate 
Okay. Then, this, okay. then when you have, we will straight away send to you. Okay. Yeah. So that takes a bit of getting used to because uh, some of the commercial players, they are used to ordering today and getting it tomorrow mm. or even on the same day. Say, so we don't do the same day. If I don't have this, I don't have, right? So uh, changing mindsets, uh, evolving needs is one of the hardest. It's very hard. We are still facing it. <laughs> and even after, you know, the, the awareness, there will still be customers that, that don't pay that much attention, right? Uh, it's okay. Because we are never designed to be mass market, or we are never designed to be a of a tawa or like you know like come create that kind of. So you find your own market. Skill. Yeah, we find our own market mm. for foodies, for health conscious people, for young families, for you know uh, uh, parents who are older. So we find that there are young families that you us use us a lot. There's also the generation that our parents' generation, right, which is like maybe sixties, seventies. Yeah, they know what's the real taste. Mm. And we also have the young ones that are buying for their parents. Mm. The people in their 15, 16 year old, they come to my shop. And I, you know, look like uh, one of them just a few days ago came. I was a bit curious, right? I, I love being at the shop because I can interact with customers, right? So as much as time permits, I'll be there. And I said, you don't look, you don't cook, right? Do you cook? I said, yeah, I don't cook. But I'm buying a gift. Mm. I said, for who? Oh, for my girlfriend's mom. I said, wow, that's a winner, right? Uh, As a guy, you know, yeah. what do you give to your future in-law? Yeah. yeah. Score points. Uh. Right? You give wine, you think this guy drinks, right? Yeah. You give soya sauce. Yeah. How nan ren. Yeah. Right? I said, that was a brilliant gift, mm. right? So I said, okay, yeah. So in fact, gifting came about because of customer asking us, hey, why do you make it as a gift? Make it as a gift. And that kept coming about and they gave us ideas how to do it. In fact, the gift set that you see, mm. the, the, the wooden one, yep. was designed about four years ago, for a hotel, five-star hotel, called the Six Senses. Okay. That were open at Duxton. Uh-huh. Right, so the GM, the chef, they sat down and then they, they created, they said they wanted a gift uniquely Singaporean in every room that they have ah. for their guests. Their rooms like, at that time, was five, eight hundred dollars a night. A few hundred dollars a night. So, they, they so the us. hotel gave Nanyang sauce to their guests? Yes. So interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And then the, 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 the chef was, I think, French and the GM was also okay. European. They know the value. Okay. And that gift set was designed for them. Mm. And then, of course, then we also, you know, managed to sell it. And that's how it came about. This must be very popular with the tourists as well. Uh, before COVID, yes, because it's handy. They can bring back. Yeah. I've got one that's five in a row. It's yeah. called the Taste of Nanyan. Yeah. That's even more popular. This is good, but this is the virgin brew. That mm. is the premium brew. Mm. I got one, the big one. Big one we find for Asian customers. These are too small. Asian customers, they like big because big is especially Chinese. And Dao Chi. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. oh, a gift. Yeah, also. right. Okay. Small, uh, mm. fulfilling in that sense. Mm. So like I want to give this to my grandfather because, you know, Teochew. Uh, my my ah, white gong is Teochew. Yes. They have this uh, habit. Uh, they like to dip in uh, yes. soy sauce. Yes, and porridge. Wow. Yeah, I will have Taoju for the Teochew Mui uh, uh. and the steamed fish. And actually, Hokkien and Teochew are just side by side. Mm. So the taste is very similar. Very similar. The way is very similar. Hokkien and Teochew. I can tell you my aunts, right? They cook. And like uh, three weeks ago, I was like, cook a meal for my girlfriend's family. Uh. Also, score point uh. <laughs> my, for my future in law, right? Yeah. And I was asking them about steaming a fish, right? Yeah. And they insisted, uh, my Ta Yi and my Sun Yi, right? Insisted that I get a particular brand sauce mm. to turn you on. And that guy will not waste money. That guy is better. You should buy that guy. You know, and all. And that's why people are very particular about yes. their taste and all. Yes. So what's Web 3.0 sauce? Good point. What's this concept? So all the th- old sauces in Sauce Legend, the brands that are 50, 100, 200 years old, are considered Web 0. Because they existed before the Web, right? Yep. Web only came out in the late 90s, mm. isn't it? So Web3 is an evolution where now it is decentralized. Now this word has been thrown around a lot, decentralized. What does it mean? Let me explain to you in source terms. A source is determined by a source maker. Mm. So a big company, let's say uh, XYZ company, will have somebody, a founder, many generations ago, who created the thing and said, this is the recipe. Soy sauce 
from this brand would taste like this. Mm. And it continued. So in our sauce, in Nanyan sauce, the sauce make, maker is my mom now, used to be my grandfather. And now me, right? Oh, so sauce that, maker. Yeah, the sauce master. So it's the position it's whereby correct. you... You, it's like sauce safeguard the taste and correct right. okay. we, we call it sauce master so okay. the sauce master will determine the taste right and that is determined uh, so called uh, it's always like that so you don't get to choose uh, what is a good soya sauce but a web 3 sauce is where you get to determine your own taste which is earlier we spoke about the customization of the sauce correct but there's a vet a vet of soya sauce is 100 litres for example Ah. You can't buy 100 litres, right? I oh, mean, then most then people wouldn't. Okay, then how? How about per bottle? Okay. So a Web3 source where we are bridging the gap from Web0 to Web3 is where anyone, you and me included, we can do a taste profiling, okay, online, and we can submit a recipe that you may use, right? You cook, right? So what's your favourite food, for example? What's your favourite dish you like to cook? Okay, actually, you talk about how you are very excited because my one of my favorite dishes ah. I learned from my mum, right? So I have this, she has this technique whereby she just any ting tai can chow with the how you. you yes. So she will just bao xiang the garlic, then throw some carrots in, then the vegetables, add some water, then the how you. Yeah. So the taste, right? Although yeah. it's like it's different. It's today is nai pai, tomorrow is asparagus and all, but the taste is that. Yeah. That taste, you know. So for example, yeah. that dish, right, of yeah. uh, oyster f- stir fry. Yeah. Uh, vegetables, kailan, yeah. or yeah. example, nai pai. Yeah. What you can do is this. With Sauce Legend as a Web3 sauce, you can work with us to create a bottle of that sauce <sighs> according to your mom's recipe. Okay. Same like what we are doing with the hawkers. We can create that for you and it can start from as low as 12 bottles. Okay. 12 bottles make a carton. Small box, 12 bottles. We can make that with you with Sauce Legend. And then that recipe, or uh, the secret recipe of the, the vegetable, the oyster stir fried vegetable that you have with the garlic, everything inside, can be used for you when you cook, used for your children in future. It can be used as a gift when you give to someone whatever we use that you have for it. And that recipe is controlled and belong to an NFT. You know what's an NFT? Yeah. Non- Non-fungible token. token. Yeah. It means one of a kind. One unique piece of art, music, work, whatever. So recipe is also an NFT. And we put it up. The yeah, NFT. Okay. On the marketplace. So if people see that your this sauce is really so good, love it, they can buy the NFT. Which means that they can buy your recipe. Mm-hmm. that's a web 3 sauce so taste is no longer controlled by one single sauce master taste is decentralized everyone can have their own customized taste that's the next level after a bespoke vet of soy sauce okay so for example rojak yes hey go right yeah and every rojak store sometimes different Correct. because some add a bit more sugar right. and they mix their own peanut on it yeah. Right? yeah so i can go to web this web 3 yes concept that you have yes and I can make this sauce, yes. this rojak sauce, yes. and you will do for me 12 bottles. Yes. You pay la, for the 12 bottles. Yeah, I'll pay for the 12 bottles. Yes. So if I'm a rojak seller, you will do it for me? Yes. Oh. And why? Because we are sauce legend. We will do it. Nanya sauce will do it, but sauce legend will do it. Because oh. I am building a community of all the individual tastes, right? Mm. That can be put up on the marketplace. And each of these NFTs has value. It's not an image that is designed and the image looks cool. The image will look cool, but it owns the recipe of that roja, which potentially somebody in Europe, US, wherever, a foodie might say, hey, I'll pay for it. $9,000, $5,000, you know, $20,000 for this recipe. Then being the custodian of the, this recipe, if the person buys, you get most of it. I'll take a little commission, commission cut, right, for, mm. for, for the efforts and all that. Mm. And then that must be sent to that person. Okay. And there's something extra that comes from it. Let me explain the last part, right? Besides getting the recipe, the one who owns the NFT will also enjoy 
a certain varieties of every bottle of that Rojak sauce that is sold at Sauce Legend. So this framework, you have already worked it out? Yes. There is a roadmap, there's a framework. It is new, it is cutting edge because most people don't understand what yeah. we are talking about, NFT or that. Yeah. But they reach out to us, we have already piloting a few of this. Yeah. I think if you go to any random Roja uncle, you probably don't know what you're talking correct. about. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that's fine. But the young generation are very excited by this. Yeah. We have people come in and say, Oh, my grandmother has got this chili crab recipe. I want to work with you. I want to make like 24 bottles, 36 bottles for my immediate family and friends, Chinese New Year, what they give out. On top of that, I want to put it up at your Sauce Legend shop at Jewel for sale. See whether enough people buy. And as an NFT, if somebody overseas or locally want to buy that recipe, they taste it's good, they can buy the NFT as well. The young, that is really the 10, mm. 15 year old, 20 year old. Yeah. So that's what the Web3 source is. And we are the first in the world to do that. Okay. So that means that I say the chili crab one, I will come up with the recipe. You need the recipe. We don't will, create the I recipe. I will work with you on a recipe. Yes. I will give you the recipe. Yes, you need to provide me the recipe. Then you will cook like a batch of 24, 36 bottles. Yes. And then we will bottle it. Yeah, we will do it. We will okay. do all the hard labor. We will sweat the small stuff, right? You just give me the okay. recipe. We work out, okay, this is the parameters. What you want to make is the cost, right? Then we will start making that small batch for you. And out of that 36, we will say that, okay, we need uh, maybe 12 to, to go put it as sauce legend, legend for sale okay. at this price. And every bottle sold, you get a cut. Right? Okay. This, right? Which to you is like, hey, okay, that's, that's pretty hey, cool. It's right? very interesting, but then your, so your central kitchen will do all this cooking. And yes. Uh, yes. Interesting. It's not a kitchen, it's a factory. We are sauce oh, it's factory. factory. Oh, it's yeah. interesting. So interesting. We, we have that facility, just that it does not make economic sense to do 12 bottles, 24 bottles. So when we see this, we are not looking at, we are not looking at how much we make. Mm. Right? If a bottle I make two dollars, twelve bottles I make twenty dollars. No, I'm not looking at that. I'm yeah. looking at building the ecosystem, the evolution into the next, bringing Web Zero into Web Three. You can see I, I I light up yeah, when I talk yeah, about yeah, it, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's cutting edge using a blockchain. How can Web Zero connect Web Three? We thought for so long, so long, and when the technology, like you said about the setup, right? The technology became available because on the blockchain everything is a ledger, right? Yeah, everything can be legalized. It's all there. Whereas if a person has a, a chili crab recipe from grandmother at home, how you sell the recipe? There's no way to sell it, right? But now with blockchain, with NFT, there's a way to legitimize and to quantify it, to sell it. So can it be sold multiple times? Uh, it can be sold on, let's say somebody buy from you, yeah. right? Technically, they can it should resell be sold one it time, right? Okay. They can resell it resell and then it. you can even get a cut off the secondary sales. Mm. That's how good the technology is now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So all these are that unique taste. La. Yes. So okay. in our shop, we say Sauce Legend is a Web3 sauce, world's yep. first Web3 sauce. Why? Our mission is to preserve our food heritage through creating new sauce, inspiring new sauce NFTs. For those who understand blockchain and NFTs, they love it. They come in, they get, wow, I have a Russian guy. Mm -hmm. Came in, he saw that we accept cryptocurrency, he, he wanted to pay by cryptocurrency. Mm. I mean, which sauce shop would have that, right? So our sauce has that old versus new, old meets new. Because I think that's how we're going to stay relevant. Very interesting. Yeah. And it's all customer-led innovation. Okay. It's not, we thought of it. We don't have a whole R&D thing. We are following what the customers are telling us. Mm. Have you always been producing other than soy sauce, the other? So let's say the the, the chicken chili sauce, right? Yes. Has it been a product in yes. the long, for a long time? Yes. So you have always been, since yes. your uncle's time, you, are, you have been Grandfather's doing this chili time, sauce. we have been making chili sauce, but we stopped it for a while, I brought it back. Oh. Yeah. The reason is because there are too few products that we have. And mm. I have the recipe, why not I bring it back? So the sauces that we have is actually very few. Most sauce makers, you have like 100 SKU. So the word SKU means a product line. So you, let's say, for example, Kikoma, Lekamke, you see like 100 different types of sauce, you've got char siu sauce, you've got everything, right? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. We have less than 20. Like we go to Sing Song, sometimes we see like this yeah. whole row of uh, all Correct. these sauces. And that's and not all they have, you know, mm. because back end they still have more, right? But what I'm saying is that we have less than, we have about what, 10, 20, 10 to 20, I don't count mm. all those products. Mm. But because of my grandfather's principle and philosophy, he's an artisan, right? More than a businessman. Whatever is no good, he will cut. 
So according to his standard, he cut a lot already, you know. And fish sauce we used to make, mm. and he cut because he said not up to standard. Not to up to him. standard, but it was good, you know. So the fish sauce I brought in now is is actually remind me of the early days, the taste. But I think it's better. And because he said he's an artist, right? He said if I put fish sauce beside soy sauce, you make the soy sauce no good. Then I asked him why. He said because it produces attracts a lot of flies, because it's fish one. Mm. Right. Whereas soy sauce, there's no flies. Soy sauce is very clean and all that. But fish sauce, you need to store it properly. Okay. Otherwise, okay. once exposed, you get just like fish, okay. right? Yeah. So little little things like that that yeah. he's very particular about. Yeah. Yeah. Clean hygiene. And you have all these memories of him, right? Yeah. So yeah. so I mean that's catch up. We used to do also, but no longer do. That's why I wanted to do the family commission podcast. Well, I think it's a great idea. It's also to document, like, you know, yeah. personalities like your grandfather. Yes. You know, and let's say your your children, you know, have a chance because like even your younger cousins they have a really have a chance to hear him talk Correct. and all. And you know what? I think there's a there's a huge potential because there's oral history. Mm. Yeah. In fact, I want to talk to you and see whether we can bring you to some of these source legends. Yep. And document their history, their yeah. story. Yeah. Of course, in different languages, like yeah. Thai might speak Thai, mm. you know, and all that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. All these stories, and also I realized that you know sometimes after a person passes away, right, you don't really remember the voice. Mm. The voice becomes a memory, Fate. you know. It's yeah, it fades vision. away, you know. So you know the voice is such that today, if someone you are very close with calls you from behind, you don't even need to turn your back. You know who is calling you because yeah. you know the voice, right? But after someone has been gone for a while, you don't remember the voice. You know, that's why I, I just recently saw on uh, social media a story about someone who has left and her daughter, uh, his daughter, sorry, will always call the mom ah. just to hear the answering tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, it, you know, the voice, yeah, the voice message, auto yeah. voice mm. message would, would be the, 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 the parent that has left, you know, the voice. So, yeah, there is that, that ci chang. Yeah. Right, the energy from the voice. And that's why you get radio DJs, you get different personalities, trainers, speakers, uh, actors. Their voice is so magnetic. Mm-hmm. It's something, you know, we are all made of energy and there's that extra oomph, you know, in that voice. What's the future of Nanyang Sauce? The future? The next generation, you know. Where do you see Nanyang Sauce going? I don't see so far. Because I live in a moment. I live for the moment. I read an article, in fact, my customers forwarded me this article about this brand that's one of the big three and wanting to plan for the next thousand years, right? Thousand <laughs> years? Like, I don't know when <laughs> I, where I'll be one year later. Okay. I am here, I'm only looking for the week, the month, not even the year. Mm. I don't know. But so far, it has worked for us. Where we are going, the flow, we see what opportunities come, we see what the customers are wanting, our innovation is ongoing. As you see, for a small company, for the last five years, Tremendous. Actually, it's very fun also. Uh, very fun. You're yeah, right. Very fun, yeah. We're having the time of life. So we are rewriting mm. history. We are yeah. creating new things that nobody thought was possible. Mm. And I don't have a big thing that says, okay, I, I think Nanyan Sauce in the future will be like this. I just say that I would be satisfied if one day on my deathbed, uh, I have no regrets. Mm. Because I will have done everything I can you know, to be honest, some sauce makers in our industry, they see us what we're doing, they, are, they don't understand what I'm doing, you know. Because like, my jian yu tai, I always want to do a pattern. But I said, <laughs> you know, I have no regrets. Right? Can you imagine could, if you meet your akong in another world? Yeah, he will say, uh, when will you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> How proud he will be. Uh, I, 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 I don't claim that. I just say that I've done my best mm-hmm. with my resources, which is limited, with my one person and my own limited ability and if it comes to the point where my kids don't want to be involved that's okay because when I come to this business there was no pressure on me that I have to extend it I have to keep it going you know and I think that's why I can have fun because, because the KPI was to make it survive actually was yeah. to keep it going right, but there was no KPI they wanted okay. to close it Okay. so there was no KPI on me so that's why I can have fun and I think if I don't give my kids that pressure like then they can chart their yeah, own journey also. They can right? chart their own journey. Like, yeah. I, I, I did this. You have to increase it like uh, 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 one time or ten times. 
if I don't give them this pressure, you know, knowing my genes, hopefully some of you get passed on, then mm-hmm. they can have some fun with it as well, yeah. you know, yeah. and make their mistakes and find their own path. Because some of the secondary, uh, second gen, third gen businesses, I know. People, when they go in, right, they are faced with yeah. how to scale it further. Because they are, they, they are forefathers done so well, right? Yeah. And of course, I think, I, 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 I don't know, because I think I was lucky, you know, that <laughs> there was no expectation. Mm. But I would want, even though, you know, there would be some expectation, but I, even now with my kids, I, I, I don't give them any expectation when they studies or whether they can write ABC. <laughs> The other day, my daughter managed to read a few words of a book, just words that she picked up, like, I love everything. I was so happy. I told my wife, oh, finally, I, I didn't know she can read, you know, because mm-hmm. that's not a matrix or that's not a criteria that I test her on. You know, so let, uh, I, I think one generation will find their own way to the next generation. Mm-hmm. And conditions will be so different. We cannot dictate. We must live for the moment and at the same time allow them the space to live for their moment mm. last question the M-A-S-S-A yeah make all sauce safe again yes uh, what's this philosophy and what's this vision behind this slogan okay because that word is masa M-A-S-S-A right doesn't stand for anything right but it's just an easy way for us to communicate that our vision for sauce legend not Nanya sauce sauce legend the sauce legend is more, more than onion sauce right now. It's for everyone. If you have a recipe, make it into an NFT and a bottle of your own. Mm. To make all sauces again by making their own sauces. Because your base ingredients for soy sauce, if you will make a bottle of the special sauce that you're talking about, let's say the Naibai oyster sauce, will be the good oyster sauce. Yes, good oyster sauce. The Web Zero oyster sauce, right, from Hong Kong, will be the Nanyan sauce that we have that is also good soy sauce. So when all your bases are good, your base ingredients are good, the sauce that, sauce legend uh, will create on behalf for for our customers will be good as well. So when that's the case, you don't have to buy any more sauces. Mm. In fact, you can turn and expense into revenue. You can turn your sources, your sources can pay for itself, put it this way. Mm. That's how all sources can be safe again. And because there's that homemade insistence on the ingredients and yes. the safety of the ingredients yes. and all. And we're not okay. trying to change the world, but we are trying to... The starfish, make, uh, one by yeah, one. Yeah, one by one, make all sources, people who want to have safe sources, make all sources safe again. Miss Whatever is in your larder, in your cupboard when you open, you know it's either your own sauce because you have the recipe, you know the ingredients, or sauces that are the, from the own makers. Mm-hmm. And every customer counts. Because by buying a bottle of sauce from Sauce Legend, it's a vote to keep that old brand going. It's not for that person to buy the next Mercedes. I'm not even talking about Ferrari. It's just for him to carry on his craft. Because mm-hmm. that's how poor old sauce makers like us are. You can see what I drive. Okay. What do you drive? I drive my van, my company van. Okay. At first coming from corporate, I was driving a Mercedes. Mm. And I first year I had a bit of adjustation. I was driving my Mercedes to send soy sauce. And I, after a year, I said, I, that's silly. How, how, many, yeah. how many sauces I can put inside, yeah. right? Yeah. So now when people say, oh, you drive, I say, I drive my van. Mm. Because I sell soya sauce. Mm. What is better than a van? Yeah. Than selling soya sauce. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's, that's how I've evolved. You know? <sighs> Great. Do you have any other things to add, Ken? No, I think it's fantastic. I think what you, you have done um, personally, it, it resonates. When I saw the angle that you're going, I said, I want to be on a show. Thank you. Please. Thank you for the opportunity to be on the show because you are capturing authenticity. No, I saw you. I saw you on LinkedIn. I was like, wow, you know, all these interesting stories, right? I must capture. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if it's interesting, but I hope, you know, you got some content, you know, and I, I, I think what you have for the memories thing, capturing family legacy trees, huge, huge potential. Nobody is doing that. 
Yeah, nobody's doing that actually. Be the first, be the biggest. Yeah, and also if you want to get a crew on site, you are looking at five figures minimum yeah, all the no, time. Come on. I think it can be. So I have this idea. I told people that you know this idea of fang wen, right? Anybody can get fang wen anytime. Maybe you're on the way to the train station. There's a reporter there, and I'm gonna ask you some question about. So that's a fang wen, right? But this concept of a zuan fang, right? Yeah. Is only when you are famous, you are rich, or you are someone of influence, yeah. then you get a zuan fang. Yes. Because on mainstream media, right? CNA, BBC. You know, they will only come and zuan fang you if you are someone. Yes. How do I, uh, 普及化专访 Yes. How do I give everyone on the street right a chance to be zuan fang? Because everybody has a story that's worth telling. That's a web three. That's yeah. web three. Really. You are that's decentralizing the power, right?、Okay. You are giving the spotlight. You giving everybody be a star.、Mm. Same as how we say, everyone now can be the source master. And even if nobody likes your sauce, right? But the taste carries on to your child, to your、yeah. grandson, you know, to your yeah. Because for your son, right? That's the taste that、like、I can tell you. My both my grandmas have passed away, right? And that taste has gone with them, you know. My my grandma don't know how she makes her yong tau fu ah.、Uh. The the soup tastes very good, so、yeah. it's gone, you know. I, I forgot to ask her、like, how how she makes it and all. Well, you can replicate、yeah. the cake. The the you can try your best to replicate. But one thing I always tell people: nothing, no Michelin star or no you know、uh, restaurant up there can beat mom's cooking. Yeah. Do you know why? Or grandma's cooking, or grandfather or father's cooking. You know why? My、because、siblings always joke that because I'm not cool, but I'm not. Yeah, maybe, but it is. <laughs> It's because it's made with love.、Mm. Let me tell you how powerful love is. Okay, it's not love as in the love that we see in the movies and all that, but love means that taking the extra effort to remove the bones,、yeah. taking the extra time to ahu na katang for hours. Yeah. So, one of the reasons I share with you why we are not afraid. A lot of people say, "Why、well, you teach people to make soya sauce? Every make their own." Then, the bone. Or bolam bega, so I say no. No lah, who will make nine months? No, it's not that. Even、yeah. they know, but another day, when I brew my soya sauce, when I ferment my soya sauce, do you know I play music to it? Huh? You do? Do you know I? The beans know that when I'm there, when I'm not there. The, it's because the, the beans. Okay. Not Mr. Bean, the the soya、uh, beans. It's because they are living. So what kind of music do they do you play to them? My playlist, ah,、uh, secret playlist.、Right? Oh. But but what I mean is, is okay. I give you an example. You Google on this, right? Yeah. There is a very famous experiment of two plants. They tried playing Jessica, ah,、uh, Jessica, jazz classical music to it. The plant grows. Okay. They play heavy metal. Yeah. Death metal to it. Plant wood. Oh. Okay. Because plants are also energy. The beans fermenting. There are millions of microbes that's fermenting the beans. It's also energy. So the vibration and、yeah. the energy field. So when the person is cooking for you,、mm. it's channeling energy to it. <sighs> yeah.、Right? They are thinking that oh, my child will come back. Yeah. Fine. You know, my son is going to come. I will make good food. They go wake up early in the morning. So all these shows. Ah、uh, well, of course the joke is that of course it's <laughs> like more work here or whatever. But、yeah. but all these little things show,、mm. and that's why, if possible, cook at home. It's just that we have lost. Yeah, the ability or the skill and all that, but it's coming back. So COVID is a big reset. Yeah, a lot of people are now starting to realize that hey, actually I can cook. When they first cook, they don't have confidence, right? Then they take a picture on Instagram. A lot of people are like, wow, very good chef, 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 master chef. Then they can always say cook, cook, cook. Then they realize there's a potential in them. Actually, yeah, yeah. actually everyone can cook. And and I tell you something. In closing, a good soy sauce, a old school soy sauce, is meant to be all encompassing. Mm-hmm. What do you past, mean by that? Look at cooking recipes now. One of the reasons I like Silver Chef recipe because it's simple,、mm. but not all cooking recipes are simple.、Mm. Some cooking recipes show that you put soy sauce and then you put salt and you put sugar. The moment I see that, I stop. You put soy sauce. A good soy sauce should already have that saltiness. Why do you still need to add salt into the, the recipe? Got、mm. more salty? No. When old school makers make this soya sauce, like my grandfather and other of his generation, it's meant to be easy for you to cook. 
because we have done the hard work. Mother Nature has done the hard work. The nine months fermentation is meant to be whole jia already. The mm. mango add all this and make it so complicated. Mm. So umami is supposed to come out. Yeah, it's supposed to be easy. That's why you see porridge. That's why people say last time I jian qing yi zhi fa jian yu yi wan zhou wo jiu ke yi zhi. With the taoju, people can eat. Why? You think about it. Because the soy sauce tastes way better mm. than now. Mm. Now, because of all the fasting, they sell you cheap, then you end up have to add all these other ingredients, end up with cost, I think, even more expensive. Yeah. You know, a lot of yeah. people don't have that. But when you have that paradigm shift, mm. actually, old school sauce meant to be very nice, very versatile. You can add on anything, it will taste good. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to add, I'm going to uh, link your website in the description box uh, for people who are interested to stay in touch with you, sure. find out what you're doing, uh, what kind of social media platforms are you most active on? Myself? Yeah. And they can, you know, follow you or add you or, you know. Uh, Facebook, I guess. Okay. Yeah, Facebook, we are on uh, facebook.com slash sauce legend. As okay. well as we are also on uh, facebook.com slash nanyan sauce. So because these are so weird names, right? They, they are available and uh, easy to find. And mm. then there's Instagram uh, less, but of course, yes, we are there to engage the younger. And then there's youtube.com slash nanyan sauce as well. Yep. So slash and don't have so session we got Twitter, but that's because of the NFT portion of it. Yeah, the 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 NFT community is yeah, very active so on Twitter. On Twitter yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, Ken, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me on the show, and uh, I wish you all the best and enjoy the sauces. Thank you for the sauces as well. Uh, once again, for people who are interested to get their hands on it, the boutique at Jewel. Yes. And for the Nanyang sauces, they can get it at NTUC Finest. Yes. And I also know that the exact these can be found on your website as well. Yes. Nanyangsauce.com. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I wish you and Nanyang Sauce all the best. Thank you. Your mom and family as well. Likewise. And all I look best. forward to maybe uh, you know down the road when you have other milestones. Have you back on the show again? Yes. Love to. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.